If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight, or I beat you to death. What's up guys? How's everybody doing tonight? Hopefully uh, everybody's having a good week thus far. There's a glitch to catch boss pals. or I guess the gym bosses in Pal World. You can capture them, throw them around, and they're pretty OP. So before we jump into the video, I am giving away a copy of Pal World if you want to give it to me. Bitch, I don't fucking Just care. Like this video, leave a comment and subscribe. You can get to, which is next to the spawn area. So come to a town, and then you basically want to aggro the guards. And then after you aggro the guards, you want to teleport to... Um, like the boss location so i'm gonna be going to the rain uh syndicate lady the one that has the big yellow uh creature thingy so yeah here's what i'll just show you how it works so yeah it's a fucking tutorial video show us how it fucking right, works i don't give a fuck about your stupid giveaway fast travel. But the gods will follow you so just keep that in mind they pretty much follow you everywhere you go so after this just basically follow you you want to go inside of Side, that you do not aggro the boss or you do not like attack the boss do not attack the boss it will ruin this uh, method of doing so yeah we can just skip this so what you need to do is you need to stand between uh the boss and the guards and the, basically we're trying to get the guards to shoot the boss as soon as they've shot the boss Just throw it at them. There you go. And there you go. You caught That's them. That's it. Obvious. Yo. All right. That's easy. Let's get it. All righty. So small settlement. Your favorite black streamer? No way, dude.
20. It's fucking stupid. All right, let's see if this works. It still works nice. There we go. Damn, that's fucking easy, bro. All right, so now what? <laughs> what do you do now? an option fast travel back to your base and yeah as you can see we have zoe and grisball and the cool thing is they are actually op as hell so they actually keep like all of their health that they have we go to the power management menu right here and we go over to them here let's do it again just inspect them um they have 30k health so yeah it's pretty nuts um what's also a bug about this is it says zero percent capture rate but obviously you can capture them and the cool thing is they act like normal pals um, they do stuff around your base and they still carry all of the perks that the main pals carry um, You can use them in battle use them in combat. So The cool thing is as well You can just obviously just take them with you like they're just a normal pal and I'll show you guys them actually fighting in combat here so we're just Yeah, it says I have like that. Oh my god, bro. My game is about to fucking yeah. crash. Oh, yeah, I don't know if it's all right down by here All right, let's really go. Strong. They do all the uh, like attacks as well, which is nuts. I thought the game was gonna crash, man. My menu was completely so frozen. We're actually gonna go capture another boss, which I've been trying to get. So we're gonna see if it works with that boss as well. So yeah, we're gonna go back to the town here, and we're gonna aggro the guards again. There we go. We got the wanted, and we're just gonna use the fast travel to go to the next location. I'm actually gonna go to this one over here in the volcano area and we're gonna fast travel there i'm actually burning up here so i actually need to be really quick and go inside um but we're going for that pillar over there as you can see we've still got the guards on us they are shooting at us 
and we're gonna go for this tower here the brothers of the eternal fire tower um i think the dude inside here has like a i don't even remember what dude's in here but we're just gonna go in because we're gonna capture him either way um ah uh, yeah this dude okay yeah so this is we're gonna we're gonna basically essentially capture this guy i think he has another electric type as well i love the animations here as well all right well, that's pretty easy. <laughs> you get 4,000 XP every time you do that? Holy shit. That's easy, bro. Not to mention, I get the busty babe on the back of the uh, Pokemon as well. I'm gonna put one in my party. Zoe and Grizzle. Which one has? Oh, right, they have the same stats. Hmm. I'm gonna switch out this. I wish you could have six fucking party members. It's really irritating. You can only have five. Get rid of this for now. Yep. Well, I can't access as many. Dude, the fucking management system needs to be a lot better at this. Not very convenient. Fucking access for towels. Open menu feed. He has a screen. There you go. Let's see. The Dork Knight with the two. Here's your first American money of the night. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Real money. And Doom Boom with the five. Fake money. Uh, quick 30 second right now. Uh, not right now. I can pull up. Juan with the one. Of course. You're broke! You're fucking I poor! Nothing less. And also with the two twos. Yeah, I'll pull those up and see what they are. And Terror with the five, watch the newest Snort Brunel. Yep, we can. We can check it out, man. Rocksteady with the one. Yeah, you're gonna need to save your fucking shekels if your Suicide Squad flops. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Peace? I don't know, man. But I'm gonna enjoy my money. That's worth two bucks, man. 24 minutes of the tip. Uh, the next. Let's see. There's the other one. 
Welcome back to the comment section. Oh I'm Oh my god, bro. Why are you sending trash? You're sending the unfuckables. Um then snort for now. So, uh, right, well, you sent more money so we can watch it. Fair enough. We'll watch it. My shekel quota has been met for the tip. And then... I've already seen this dog video, but I'll pull it up to you. Yeah, the dog was apparently fine, too. It just got stunned. It just was scared and, like, froze up. And I sell it with the five. Yakuza and Tekken at 90 meta with Final Fantasy VII expecting to join them. 2024 is starting off sexy, even with this Pokemon game thing. Yup. I'm glad that, you know, games are actually coming out and not complete shit. But that's the power of the Japanese devs. They actually make decent games still. I would do that to my dog? Hell no. Why would I try to injure my dog, bro? I have to pay for the fucking medical bills. Oh, look, dude. They just killed each other. Yo. She wouldn't give up the fucking pussy, so he just, like, completely fucking killed her. Damn. Wow. It's a cold world out there. What's the point of the poll? I don't know. Why, does, why not? It's just a random poll. Just curious. Griffin can't afford his dog's medical bills. That's right, I'm poor. That's why I need super berries. To power up my wallet. is a fool's dream because you might get peace for a little while but it won't last take the money and run Dead, or that's a guy. Oh my god, now he's gay.
The Dork Knight with the two. All right, man. You shut the fuck! Don't you fucking tell me to my face to shut the fuck up! Yeah, I heard Rich got trolled last night or some shit, and he had on what he thought was Ethan Ralph's ex-wife or some shit. <laughs> like, bro, why is he bringing on people's ex-wife onto his stream to fucking talk shit? Like, that's so, that's so fucking petty. Imagine if somebody did that to him. He would fucking lose his mind. Like, I don't like Ethan Ralph as much as the next guy, but, like, bringing on people's ex-wife to talk shit about them is kind of weird. I don't know, bro. That'd be like if I invited Dreamcast guy's trans girlfriend on to tell us what his actual trophy level is. I'm gonna get all 10, because that's the XP bonus. Wow, it already leveled up 11 times. That's pretty good. file officer. Then I can put him in the juicer, too. This thing where you can put your pals in like a fucking machine and it like extracts the essence kind of like the candies in pokemon go and you use them to power up your pals apparently i haven't tried it yet but i need to i have a couple pals i want to juice Definitely better than Starfield. 
I'm not having to convince myself that I'm having fun. That's how I know that this is better than Starfield. Because Starfield, I was trying to convince myself I was enjoying it. Uh, I Styler with the five. World Peace is What is this? Activision says that in-game voice chat and text moderation feature in Call of Duty has been successful with Call of Duty seeing a 50% reduction in toxic comms. Over 2 million accounts were notified. Wow, that's fucking horrible. That sucks, man. The fucking Microsoft police state is in full effect. You know that that's a fucking Phil Spencer, you know, implementation. They're probably using Microsoft's AI to fucking track the voices and shit. I guarantee you that's why Microsoft was mostly interested in Call of Duty 2. Is because it has a large enough user base that they can deploy their fucking chat moderation AI. And then they can sell it to other video game companies as well. As like a feature. And then they'll sell it to places like Discord, fucking TeamSpeak. All of these third party applications. And then they'll implement it as well. And then they'll just start using AI to ban everybody, even if you're having a private conversation. Shit, they may even sell it to the government to track phone calls. They'll sell it to PlayStation, if Nintendo. Nintendo ever put in in that chat. But yeah, no, I guarantee Microsoft is using God as like a testing ground to deploy that so they can sell it. Yo, did y'all see that? She turns naked. She uh, used the ball on. Her. She like loses her clothes. That's nice. Built-in nude mod. The audio in this game is dog shit. It's not you. It's just the game. That's why I don't even use the audio. I have on my headphones for my computer. And I have my Xbox headphones over to my left, and I don't use them on this game because I don't need to hear the fucking bad sound. I think it's funny, people are saying like, this is proof that you don't need a huge budget to make a good game. And while I agree in certain aspects, the lack of budget definitely shows. Like the fucking map is in 100p, the fucking audio sounds terrible, the combat is glitchy as shit, your pals fucking phase through walls and the floor, the AI is completely busted. Like there's a lot of issues with this game that people are fucking, you know, glazing over basically because indie bro it's an indie gem Titties is out.
<laughs> they might ban me for it. Shit. Uh-oh. I guess I better delete it, huh? Dude, that's so fucking gay. I forgot about that garbage. Alright, let me etch it into my memory real quick. Yeah, dude. Lightning, my beloved. Dude, Microsoft uses AI to scan through everything, bro. They can scan your fucking Microsoft Word documents and they recommend changes for hate speech. I fucking shit you not. Like, if you type a no-no word in your fucking Microsoft doc, they have an underline underneath of it and says this word might be offensive. Like, those fuckers scan everything. On OneDrive, they go through all your, like, cloud storage. Like, everything, dude. They fucking farm as much data and information on you as possible. Like, Microsoft is one of the worst. And they're using AI to fucking power on that shit. So... more like Electabuzz than uh, Pikachu. Now, if they jacked the Pikachu design, then there would be problems. So, they're not going to make a clone of Pikachu. Dude, Pikachu's the highest grossing media character of all time. That's where Nintendo would step in and like be like, hell fucking nah. They'd be all over them like stink on shit. Nugget with the two. How many furries have you caught already? Doing what? Poking their dog? I don't know. I think I'm up to 78.
Where do you spend the golden coin? So there's merchants in the small settlement you can shop with. And then scattered across the map, like right here on the map, there's a black market dealer in this area. Kind of more so over to the coastal side, to the left. Like right in here, there's a black market dealer that you can buy pals, but the merchants in the town, you can buy like basic supplies and shit. So if you don't want to make medicine or things like that, you can just buy it from them instead, which saves you a lot of time. Because crafting medicine takes fucking forever. But I don't know if there's more stuff you can spend money on. Yeah, if I was the devs of PAL World right now, I would be, like, signing, you know, merch deals. I would be, you know, working on producing possibly, like, a little animated series or something. Like, bro, they need to franchise this as quick as possible to capitalize on the hype and, uh, you know, cement a permanent place for the franchise. Because the problem is, is if Poke, let's say Pokemon releases a big ass, like improved game, like let's say the next Pokemon game is a straight fucking banger for the Switch 2. This franchise is done because the second Pokemon's back on their A game, bro, and all the fucking clones and shit are done. Like this game is not going to survive an actual good Pokemon game coming out. A game like this can succeed because the Pokemon franchise, you know, Game Freak's games have been dog shit recently. But if Pokemon actually released a halfway decent game again, you know, people are obviously going to go with the actual franchise they know and care about. So the problem that these devs are going to run into is they need to, like, capitalize as quickly as possible on this game and try and, like, cement a place for it in the gaming and media industry as a whole. Dude, that Pokemon Arceus game is bad. I didn't like it. I don't like open world Pokemon. Like, Pokemon does not need to be open world. I don't know. That is a change I've never agreed with for that franchise. Like, I didn't really... Like, Sword and Shield was okay, because it was, like, open-world regions. The entire game was an open world. But Scarlet and Violet was horrific. I just did not like that game. It was really boring and bland. It didn't have memorable towns or... Like, I don't know, bro. Scarlet and Violet was just really bad, in my opinion. What the fuck is it doing all the way out here? Like, I feel like they were on such a good track with Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu from an art style perspective. I didn't like the catching mechanic. I thought they fucked that up, but they were trying to do, like, the, you know, Pokemon Go tie-in, so whatever. But when it comes to, like, the graphical, like, art style, I thought Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were perfect. Those games perfectly encapsulated the Pokemon art style. They looked great, they ran great, they had good character models and animations and everything. And if they would just keep making Pokemon games with that exact style, I think it would have been fine. But they went to the pseudo open world bullshit, and it was like, ugh. I don't like the pseudo open world bullshit, if you can't tell. Uh, I don't have a gun because I need to find gunpowder to build ammo. So I have to find where those, whatever those things are called. I've run into them before. They attacked my base. I forget what they're called. 
They're like suicide bombers. They're like the creepers of Pal World, basically. They're like a creeper. <laughs> Shit. Where was it? That um, passing. These Toko Tokos. The Toko Tokos drop gunpowder. I saw her with the five. But yeah, I need to find like a, I guess, consistent source of gunpowder before I can start using guns. Because I used my pistol and it's good, but it ran out of ammo almost immediately, so. Uh, Gar of the Rage of the Two, how's Pal World treating? I'm actually really liking this game. It's fun. I like that it's not a super hardcore survival game. And I also like the Pokemon aspect, so it's pretty good. You found some Toko Tokos in the mountains near the small settlement. So what, uh, right here? Bro, you can't even tell what the fuck that is, because it's just like a blur. They need to fix this map, dude. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> that is horrible. There's no excuse the map should be that low res. Like, come on, man. That's such an easy fix, too. I don't know. That's like literally just a PNG image. I don't even know if that's 240p when you zoom in, man. That's, that's probably even lower than that. <laughs> they need to fix that. That's like such an easy thing. It's just one map, which I think is smart. If this game was procedurally generated, it would kind of suck. Because the nice thing about Pokemon games is, like, you always have, like, I guess, resources to turn to, and it builds a good, like, sense of community and shit like that. So if everybody was playing a different version of it, I don't think it would work very well. I think the way they have it set up is better. I think one map is fine. That's how I would do it. Live. Showing nudity. <laughs> kind of like Elden Ring. Yup. on PlayStation missing out on this yep. banger? I mean, it could literally come to PlayStation tomorrow, so... I don't know. It's just because it's an early access and PlayStation and Nintendo don't have early access. So... I mean, literally, PlayStation could make an exception tomorrow and this game could be on there, so... I don't really think they're missing out on it. They're just not going to get it this soon. It'll definitely come to PlayStation very quickly. No, I don't think this game has crossplay, but maybe it does. I think only maybe if you have like the Xbox version on PC and console. 
but I don't think you have cross-save and cross-play with Steam and, like, Xbox. Just, like, the Xbox version on PC and console. It does. So if you buy it on Steam, you're kind of relegated to Steam users, but if you download it through, like, the Xbox client on PC, I think you can play with other people on the Xbox client and then also on the console. So, I don't know entirely how it works, but that's what I would assume. Um, so what is it? This, this is a, the PAL Essence Condenser. Okay, I need some of those. Let's grab some. I don't really know. If, yeah, Fortnite did have like these little fragments of them. Don't remember. like Pokemon, but you don't agree with it. What? When have I not liked Pokemon? Bro, if I don't like Pokemon, I don't know why I would have, like, over $100,000 worth of Pokemon-related items, so, yeah, no. I definitely like Pokemon. This thing is huge, bro. God damn. Where should I put this thing? Jesus, bro, this thing is massive. Alright, so PAL condenser menu. So you put in the base PAL, and then you use PALs as essence. I didn't look what the ch oh it gives him like a star rating so let's see his attack is 309 257 let's see what happens if I put more in I don't know what the like actual effect is oh I need 16 holy shit okay there it shows you what the uh boost is so it's a very minor boost but it's pretty good I mean, what? That's like a six-ish percent increase. It's not great, but it's not bad. So let's see. Let's try this one because I've got a bunch of these. This is sweet. All right, so I'm going to go get some more Zoe and Grizzbolts.
that's just an easy way to level up my mons, too. So. Here, let's just see if the vendor is something new. Do I have this? I don't think so. I, oh yeah, I did have it. Shit. Nah, I'm probably not gonna get the Cybertruck. Dude, they upped the price of the Cybertruck model I picked out from 57,000 to like 89,000 or something, so I'm not gonna buy that shit. I'm not buying a fucking electric car for $80,000 or whatever the fuck. Or 90000 pretty much. So. That's way too much for a fucking, basically a golf cart. I mean, if you're talking about a hundred grand for a car, basically, you can do a hell of a lot better. so electric vehicles are not practical at all. I don't have a place to charge it, so I'd have to go sit at a fucking supercharger station for like 30 minutes, and I don't really want to do that. Plus, the charging is not cheap. Like, people make it seem like it's cheap, but to use those charging stations is pretty expensive. Not to mention the gas in your tank doesn't really go bad. The battery will drain naturally over time, so even if you don't drive to the full capacity of the battery, you're still going to lose capacity over time. I don't know, man. I'd rather just be able to put, you know, gas in my car in less than 30 seconds to be done. So, I mean, shit, man. I could get a fucking Audi or some shit for 100 grand. That's ridiculous. I could get, like, an actual luxury car for that type of money. I don't have to get no lame-ass Tesla. Especially for me, because I literally drive to the gym and the grocery store, that's about it. So, there's no real point in me even having a, like, expensive car, because I don't fucking drive anywhere. It'd be a complete waste of money. It would just sit there, depreciate, and I would barely even use it. you have so far um i mean most of them so this hell zephyr is really good this is really good 
I just got this. I don't know if it's good or not. Um, this is not that great. And then Rizbald I haven't used, but he's got like an insane amount of health. Like, cause he's a bitch. Come on. Like, 80,000 health. <laughs> and, you know, these have like 2,000. So they're, it's just like broken. But that's a glitched. I'd rather invest money in like a property than put a hundred grand into a car. I'd rather buy like a fucking candle or something. Like put like a big ass down payment down. I don't really give a fuck about my car that much. Yeah, Teslas are insanely expensive to repair outside of warranty. Yeah, I want to buy, like, a condo in this, like, area of, uh, like, the D.C. area called Pentagon City right outside of the Pentagon. Hence the name. But it's over where Amazon built their new HQ... You know, you have the huge military presence over there, and I want to get a condo and then rent it out to military people, because if you rent out a condo to the military, or not to the military, but someone in the military, and there's ever an issue with them paying their rent, you can call, like, the actual Department of Defense and file a complaint, and the Department of Defense will just start garnishing their wages. So if somebody doesn't, uh, you know, pay your rent and they're in the military then the DOD will actually withhold money from their paycheck and give it to you directly to pay the rent so there's like zero risk of having unpaid rent basically so long as you rent it out to a military so that's what I would try to do and I feel like that'd be a pretty good uh, pretty good strategy especially in this area because there's a on a military fire here. Uh oh, did the pedophile guard despawn? Uh oh. Shit. I am not doing section eight. I'm not renting out to a bunch of broke boys and then having the place fucking trashed when they leave. Fuck that. That's disgusting. Section 8 housing is where basically the government gives poor people a housing allowance. So basically, you have these people who don't even pay for the place they live, so they don't keep it clean, they don't maintain it, they trash the place, they'll steal appliances, if it's pre-furnished, they'll steal furniture, and they'll just completely destroy the property, because there's zero fucking repercussions for them. Yeah, they won't stay that way even if they were recently remodeled, though. That's the problem. It's because, you know, all it takes is one person to move in, and then they trash the fucking house. I mean, 
you can make money doing it, but you have to be willing to have your places completely destroyed. So it's a huge trade-off. You can make good money because it's guaranteed money from the government, but you're going to be losing a ton of money in addition just by doing like basic repairs and shit. So, yeah, I don't I don't really want to rent to the broke boys personally. I'd rather rent to like actually, you know, financially responsible and you know, successful people than not. You know, just I got a free house cuz I'm a broke ass bitch <laughs> type shit. all single moms yeah single moms with four kids from four different men My baby against the world. I need a man who's gonna step up and be a father to my four children from four different men. Is that too much to ask? Yes. Dude, those fucking social media posts are always so sad. Because then you see, like, these simp-ass dudes in the comments. Like, you're beautiful. I'd be happy to have four beautiful children. And you look at the guy, and he's, like, 400 pounds with, like, a fucking patchy-ass neck beard. And probably lives with his mom. And it's like, oh, my God. Griff, do you eat pussy? Uh, only if I like the chicken butt. Let's say theoretically it was like a one-time thing. No. Like a one-night stand, I guess. clean up now that's a different story man then I definitely what's my take on drug dealers I don't really care I can respect the hustle but just don't play the victim when you get caught oh Sneeko would definitely clean up Should have eaten a Yeah, personally, I think drug use should be decriminalized, but no one should be able to get any sort of government assistance if they're actively using drugs. Like, you should have to take a drug test to get any sort of government aid. And if you test positive for drugs, then you shouldn't get any money. And that way, you know, people can live their life how they want, but other people don't have to pay for it. I think that's the happy medium.
unjust hero with the one. You're broke! You're gonna need some You're fucking section poor! Eight housing. So how, wait, tonight was the uh, primary, right? How did that go? Does anyone have the uh, final count for that? I saw somebody mention Trump. Tr well, I know Trump won, but what was like the final number? Obviously Trump won, that was never a question. I was just curious what the spread was. Fifty-five percent? Yeah. That's the thing, is she's gonna do well in like these fucking northeastern states because they're like basically democratic states. So yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, she's gonna get absolutely destroyed in any southern state. 100%. Like, any southern state, a state like Texas, even something like, you know, New Mexico or Arizona, she's gonna get fucking swiped, bro. Or Florida, you know, yeah. No, she has no chance of actually winning. She's literally a Democrat plant, so... Yep. The only state she might win is California. Who like, cares about that if you're a Republican? Like, It's not really a great indicator. Nikki Haley only got 29% of Republican voters. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, because, what, New Hampshire's an open primary state, right? So anybody can show up, so I'm sure a bunch of fucking shit libs showed up just to fucking troll Trump, dude. So, yeah.
Nobody wants a female president. I don't really, dude, I don't give a fuck. If we had a based ass female president, I don't give a fuck, bro. I would take a actually like based female president of a fucking Joe. Like, are you fucking shitting me? Yeah, I would take Hillary Clinton over the, or not the other fuck, um, Joe Biden first. <laughs> Because the thing is, is Hillary Clinton, whether you like her or not, her wealth and power is directly linked to the United States, so it's not in really her benefit to deteriorate that. So I think she would be better than Joe, but that's not really saying much, man. Anybody would be better than Joe. Joe Biden is the most pathetic excuse for a president we've probably ever had. He makes Jimmy Carter look like a fucking pro. Jimmy Carter viewed as an alpha. The thing, the difference between Jimmy Carter and like Joe Biden is Jimmy Carter was actually a good guy, just completely underprepared for what it would take to be president. Joe Biden is completely unprepared for what it takes to be president, and he's a piece of shit. So that's the difference between Joe Biden and Jimmy Carter is, you know, Joe Biden's a corrupt piece of shit. He's completely incompetent. Jimmy Carter was actually a decent guy, just completely unprepared to be president. So that's the distinct difference between the two. You know, people actually liked Jimmy Carter. People just didn't like Trump, so they voted for Biden. I have 16 now, let's see. Or how many of them? Um, it's worth upgrading this pal though while I can because, bro, his health is like, the health boost I'm getting from upgrading him is more health than an entire fucking pal would have. Like, it's fucking insane. Yeah, everybody knows Trump's going to be the nominee. Like, it's not really a question at this point. It's only hopium from the fucking dipshits. Oh, wait, how many more did I need to... 32, right? Yeah. Jesus, man. So you need 96. Then 16. So 112. And then... So you need 116 of the same pal in order to fully upgrade. Dear God. That's fucking ridiculous, man. They definitely want to keep you grinded. No, I don't have Reptiro or whatever his name is. I haven't gotten very far on the map, so... I still have a lot to fill out.
Let's go get this real quick. Uh, I sell it with the five. Check it out, man. Uh oh. Is that. But gosh dang it, I've had so much fun playing it. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot I can kill these now. Watch this shit, guys. Ready? These little <gasps> fuckers ain't shit anymore. I can cook this tar. Yeah. Oh yeah. fuck, I missed. I don't have many spears. Fuck. Maybe I shouldn't do that boss yet. Get in the ball. Come on, you dumb bitch. <sighs> Level 33. Nice. Yeah, I need to go make more balls before I do this. Yo, what's that mod? Just teleport it. Okay. animals quit getting injured you stupid fucking bird or titties? Definitely ass. of those paldium fragments. Tifa has both while Aerith is a surfboard. Nah. -uh. Isiler, you're greatly underestimating the power of the athletic build. Not every chick needs to look like she's got two fucking water balloons on both ends.
Yeah, there's like a work event at my office tomorrow, and they're trying to get me to go, and it's like, hell no. That shit ain't gonna happen, bro. They're like, they they have free food, and I'm like, yeah. The last time I went to one of those, they had free food, and it was from a sandwich place. They didn't order enough bread for the sandwich platter. So literally everybody could only have one piece of bread with their quote unquote sandwich. And we got like literally sliced chicken, lettuce, and tomatoes. That was it. That was the free food. And yeah, no. I'm good, bro. Like if I'm gonna fucking sit for eight hours in front of a computer, I'm not gonna do that. So, I don't really care to go. Plus, I have to pay $17 to park, so no thanks. Well, it's not that... I mean, it was kind of stingy because it's like you couldn't have gotten something better than sandwiches. It was like from one of those health food places too, so it wasn't even that great. Griffin could meet his future girl. Hell no. Dude, I ain't shitting where I eat. Thank you very much. I'm not at work to make friends or relationships. I'm there to do my job, but go home, get there. Well, I never actually leave my home, but you know. You get the point. I'm not there to conversate. Shit. Damn it, do I have to fucking pick up something? Better not. No, it's not like the real estate value. It's like the quarterly account meetup or whatever. So it's like the overall, I guess, division of my company. So like all the people that work in the same kind of division as me of the company are supposed to go in tomorrow for like a social lunch and all that type of shit. But I have two meetings at lunchtime anyway, so it doesn't matter. I wouldn't be eating the free food anyway. So by the time I'd even be able to go and get the free food, you know, it'd all be gone anyway. Because I have a meeting at 11 until 12, and then I have a meeting from 12 until 1.30. So, yeah. But yeah, if I have to go sit in a fucking cubicle and work on my laptop, I'd rather not go. Like, if it was an all-day event where I didn't have to do any working, like, for my previous project I was on, and we had, like, our team building fucking week or whatever the fuck, like, that's fine, because, you know, you don't actually have to work. You just have to show up and then, you know, conversate and shit. But I don't really want to have to work in a fucking shitty cubicle whatever just sitting there by myself with nothing else to do you know i'd rather be you know chilling at home with my fucking dog and tv and shit like that so you know yep. 
It's not really much incentive for me to go in. And it's not like I've even met anybody on my project really even. So it's not like I'd be like going, oh, hey, let's meet up. Or whatever. It's like, I literally know nobody on like any other level other than like, yeah, I'm checking in. Yo, I'm higher live, so let's vibe just you and I with this playlist. All right, yeah. We Griffin must change. Change in what? Something more comfortable. I saw it with the five timeout FBI from what he just said. What did he say? IRS with the one? You're broke! You're fucking poor! And Juan with the one. You're broke! You're fucking poor! JBT with the two, would you buy the Gen 5 remakes? Group? Yeah, I probably would. I'm a pokey sound. Seven inches? That's pretty big. He included feet into the ass and tits. Oh my god. Yeah, that sounds about right. Those feds are into some weird shit, man. There was a very cute girl at the gym. Nice. Did you hit her up or not? Nah? There's a bunch of bad bitches at my gym, bro. But, you know. I ain't gonna be that guy that, you know, flirts at the gym or hits on the chicks at the gym. That's just kind of cringe. I don't know. That shit would piss me off. So. It pisses me off when people ask me how many fucking sets I have left. So, I can only imagine how much it would piss me off if somebody was like, Can I get your number? You keep checking out gym girls, you're gonna end up on a TikTok. Good. I wanna be on a TikTok. 
I want a girl to ask, were you just staring at my ass? I'm like, yeah, that shit's bad as fuck. I'm gonna just own it, bro. Like, if they want to shove a camera in my face, I'm gonna put on the show. I have zero fear of being put on TikTok. What are they gonna do? Call me sexist. Oh my god. Exactly. Oh well. I'll just be like guilty. Yeah, if they say you sexist pig. I'll be like, oh, guilty. And then what are they gonna do? Nothing. Absolutely fucking nothing, bro. They ain't gonna do or say shit at that point. They'll have no idea how to react. Where the fuck? Oh, there it is. No, we're using the map, bro. I want a Wii fun. Protein shakes today. Unless you're a Chad, it's futile to attack me. Futile trying to attack, attract a female without resources or something. I don't entirely agree with that. Because then nobody would ever date in college. Because everybody, you know. I don't know, man. If you're looking at the wrong type of chick, most people are. I mean, if you're going for like Instagram, I'm not gonna take it too much there. Come on, bruh. Come on, use something. Dog, what are you doing? Fucking attack. When did that happen? Oh, that's news to me. Let's go, baby! Yeah. 
dreams do come true. Alright, I gotta go take a mean shit, guys. I will be back. God damn. Alright, yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll be in the chat, though, as usual.
All right, I'm back, guys. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, bro, I ate a fuckload of protein and shit today, and then I had two protein shakes, and I hit legs heavy today, so I'm guessing that was a uh, recipe for success. I don't know. Did I wash my hands? Oh, I'll be back. Yes, I washed my hands. With my tongue. I let my dog clean now. <laughs> Shit, man. Oh my god, dude. I feel like a pound or two lighter, though, for real. Jesus. Yeah, I muted you while you were on the shitter. Or while I was on the shitter, I guess. I guess you were kind of in the shitter. But, you know. Fuck. Alright, so where am I on Super Chats? I don't even fucking know. Um... Any skid marks? Uh, no.
So let's see, Claw's Mystery with the 50 world piece is based. Because that means any conflict seeker is instantly oofed. Have you thought about that oofed in mass? Hmm. Well, I guess it depends on your definition of piece. If that includes like theft and all that other shit, then maybe it'll be good. Like if all criminals just disappeared. That could be pretty cool. Music's too loud. How do criminals help drive the economy? That's kind of counterintuitive, man. Yo, let's see so and Grizzbolt. And not just because I want to look up her skirt. I already have one of these, though. Although I don't have a level 32 one, so. <gasps> Claw's Mystery with the 20 actually Griffin has a boyfriend and it's Jethro. Yeah, he's not my type, bro. Plus, he would never, because, you know, he's a member of the tribe and they don't really, you know, go outside of those bounds. Claw's Mystery with the 20 Griffin is in a poly relationship with Jethro and FBI. I would never. Don't get mad, but video games is a waste. Fuck you, dude. Gaming is my life. Without gaming, I would have killed myself. Yeah. <laughs> 
Say I read yours, Claus Mr. the 20, Sushi Squad Devs made Harley mock her BAS. I have no idea what that means, bro. And Claus Mr. with the 20, reading Daryl Zone is a waste of oxygen time. I agree. I read NSA Super Chats. I did them when I was in the shitter, bro. Oh, did he send a different one? Hmm. Oh, I don't think I read this one. Uh, Time Out of Mod that gets their name added the most. Looks like FBI, so... We're gonna make a new definition for FBI open up. AKA spread them cheeks and get fucking railed, bitch. Yeah, Rich quit again, apparently. I can respawn where I was trying to go. There you go. I took the W, thank you. Fuck you all. You thought I was out, but I wasn't. I always win. It took Jesus three days. It took me three seconds. Who's the real fucking Lord and Savior?
slow walk. desert yet. been the sand land. Oh, weapons damage. Pick up Final Fantasy X again? I have no idea. No clue, man. I just need 12 more pals and then I have all the difficult achievements in this game. Everything else is easy, you just go and fight the gems. Why do I have a cat? I thought you were... I thought you are a cat either. Oh god, the fucking furries are invading. You guys get to see this shit. Get ready, the fucking furry bait is about to come. Yeah, I'll 
show you all what I mean. Look, if you go to their entry, they're number 69. So the devs knew what they were doing. They're number 69. And it says, seeking a night of love. It is always chasing someone around. At first, it only showed interest in other pals, but in recent years, even humans have become the target of its debauchery. It's literally fucking furry bait, bro. Griffin is trying. Hell nah, bro. I'm too intimidated by real women, much less fictional monsters. Let's see what's over here. Forgotten Island. Yeah, Final Fantasy 16 is definitely going to come to Xbox.
What is the hardest achievement that you acquired in your many uh the hardest achievement? She I don't actually know. Uh, beating Mass Effect with one hand. There you go. <laughs> I have no idea, honestly. Yeah, I've never done the, uh, like, Gears Seriously 3.0 type things. I'm not that big of a sweat. What's the next graded 360 game you're thinking of getting? Well, um, I bought a copy of Halo 3 Legendary Edition Sealed. I bought, um, Bioshock Limited Edition Sealed. I have Assassin's Creed 2 already graded coming on, like, on the way. Um, but I don't know yeah. if there's, like, a specific game I'm looking for right now. I have, like, a box of games I'm getting graded, like, my uh, Best Buy edition Darksiders 2. I have a Borderlands 2 launch edition with the foil cover. I got another copy of Final Fantasy 13 that's like in pristine condition. I have Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, which is like in perfect condition. Um, I'm getting my Destiny Steel from the collector's editions. So I'll have a Destiny yeah. 1 and Destiny 2 steel book. I have, oh, Dark Souls 2 Black mm. Armor Edition. I have yeah. that sealed. Um, I don't think. I have a lot of 3DS games in the game. Yeah. yeah, and Switch. I have two more copies of Skyrim 5th Anniversary Edition I'm getting graded. Um, three copies of the Target Final Fantasy Edition that are coming back from Wada now. And three more for PS3 and this So I've got quite a bit of stuff. There's not like one specific game I'm looking for. about getting a copy of Gears 2 created, but that's pretty expensive. They're like 400 something for good condition ones. With the uh, do not sell by date. Yeah. 
here. I can see what I have in my WADA account because I have it all entered. Let me see real quick. I have all my stuff entered ready to submit so I can just select what I want to submit. So I have four copies of Super Mario 3D All-Stars, two copies of Titanfall for Xbox One, Rise Son of Rome Day One Edition for Xbox One, Dead Island, li or Limited Edition, I think it is, or Special Edition, whatever it's called, for Xbox 360, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Steelbook, and Sealed Game, Darksiders 2 for 360, Best Buy Lenticular Cover Edition, Elden Ring Pre-Order Steelbook, Assassin's Creed Revelation, Signature Edition for 360, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, um, 10 copies of Pokemon Alpha Sapphire, 10 copies of Omega Ruby. Um, why are these double? What? Some of these are double. Uh, Final Fantasy 13, Destiny 2 Steelbook, Destiny 1 Steelbook. Either. I'm fucking doubled up. Huh? Hmm. Yeah, some of these are doubled in here. But those are some of them. And then I have the two copies of Oblivion 5th Anniversary Edition. I'm trying to think what else. I've added some stuff. And then the three copies of the Steelbook Edition of Lightning Returns for PS3. So... That's what I have entered right now. But I have a bunch of games just sealed that I'm not grading yet. That's the good thing about grading, is once you have the game, you can grade it whenever you want, so there's not really a huge rush to do it. Plus, game grading is pretty expensive. It's like 40 to 50 bucks, depending on the like special they're running. So, Shit, there was an egg up there. Yeah, it sucks, though. I bought, I think, 10 copies of Titanfall 2 sealed, and all but two of them had, like, a cut in the plastic. So, the only Titanfall that's uh, listed on eBay right now, like a WADA graded one, has ripped uh, corners in, like, the shrink wrap, so it has an A rating. So mine, theoretically, if it gets graded, should be, I think, the highest graded copy. But yeah, I want a copy of the original Titanfall graded. I feel like that's the really cool. Plus, I like that game a lot, so I don't think I'll even sell it, but I want it. What? But I think Mario 3D All-Stars graded should do well, because I bought those and I put them in case protectors immediately, so... Those motherfuckers should be crispy. Hmm. Yeah. Well, 
well, it doesn't matter that it's online only. It's the fact that it's a display piece. Because you're not buying a graded game to ever play it. You're buying a graded game to have, like, a visual, like, you know, almost like a piece of art kind of thing. It's almost like a piece of merchandise at that point. So it's not about the playability. It's more of a display piece. So, if anybody like myself is nostalgic for the original Titanfall, then they'll be like, oh, that's really cool. Because you definitely won't be able to get a copy of it at that point. Yo, what's that? Fell bad. I don't have one of those. that emo ass look at his eye. The achievements are like catch a pal, catch 10, catch 20, then catch 50, and then catch 90, I think it was, and then just defeat the five different gem leaders, so. I'm up to how many pals? 79 caught, so I only need to catch 11 more unique ones for the final catching achievement, and then once I get that, I just need to get the gems. I don't think I can make that swim because I don't have a saddle. Eh, you know what? I'll give it a shot. Why not? You only live once, man. Okay. Let's see if I can make it across. Easy, bro. I 
can't believe I haven't been over here yet. Uh, actually, no, I can't. Are you? It bounced off with a 60% catch rate? Alright, fuck this thing. I'm on blog TV with my fucking hands up. I'm not starting my fucking self. The silver key, of course. All right, there's no way I can make that. Climb. What? Line, bitch. I love the textures, man. Look at that. It looks beautiful. Dude, that's a girl. What? I can see up her skirt. Dude, the protein shits ain't a fucking joke right now. Holy crap. Alright. I may have to go take another shit break, dude. Damn. What? Why can I see this girl up there? It's like basically a metaphor for my dating life, bro. No matter how hard I try, the perfect girl is always out of reach. Real talk. This shit deep. a fucking squirrel statue. Alright, I'll be back, guys. Give me a few. I'll be in the chat, though, as usual.
right, man, I'm back. Holy shit, bro. I don't know what's going on, but my asshole is in danger. Jesus, man. Lightning is actually stronger than Abby. Yeah, but Abby has more of a, let's say, control over her pelvic muscles, if you catch me.
already have one of those. Although, uh, I don't have any regular balls left. Only gigas. Yeah, it's like a mix of Melodic and uh, Suicune. Todd Howard wished that he made. He wishes he could make something with so much soul. Good luck. Even though this game is kind of a soulless clone of other games, it's more original than fucking Star Slot. Let's see, where am I? Super Chess. Claws Mystery with the 20, Incineroar was character number 69 on Sash Ultimate. There you go, man. It's all a conspiracy. And more Pothead Investor with the 32 months, video recommendation, Johnny Somali. Oh, uh, is that 
It's the fucking retard in Japan. Thank you, Rocket Bunny, for sponsoring this video. Thank you, Rocket yeah. Money, for sponsoring this video, but more about them later. Ethan with the two seal clubber gaming. That's right, fuck those seals, bro. A claws mystery with the 50. A friend of mine just told me the trans have a right to transition to death. I mean, everybody does, to be fair. Your life is yours to discard at any time. Claws mystery with the 20. I saw a trans meme that had Sonic with chess. Oh, my God. Oh. That's cursed. That's fucking cursed, bro. Maybe Sonic had fucking, what is that shit called, gyno or whatever the fuck? There you go. Maybe Sonic struggles with gyno comastia. Or gymnastia, I don't fucking know what it's called, but yeah. Man titties. Maybe he struggles with man titties. So first up, we got Activision says that the in-game voice chat and text moderation feature on Call of Duty has been successful, with Call of Duty seeing a 50% reduction in toxic comms since the feature, aka people just stopped using game chat. Um, over 2 million accounts were notified about chat violations. Yeah, this shit's fucking gay, man. Fuck this AI bullshit. I don't know, man. That's 100% Microsoft. And here we go. That ankle said not today. Oh my god. Ew. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm so beautiful. Yeah, I would have yelled strike. Dude, who cares? Like, when you're that fucking fat, it's not even if you're male or female. It's, like, barely even recognizable as a human being, in my opinion. I don't know, bro. You start to lose any and all features that would even be considered feminine or masculine when you're that fat. So, Colt is having an identity crisis. Uh-oh. Poor Colt, man. But gosh dang it, I've had so much fun playing it! Poor Colt eats wood. And if Xbox decides that they're going to move to eventually put some of their games on other platforms, because right now, let's be honest, they're already on TVs. They're on Samsung TVs and LGs. They're on NVIDIA Shadow or NVIDIA uh, GeForce Now. They're on cloud. They're on mobile. They're on handhelds. They're on PC. They're on the cheapest PC. They're on a $6,000 PC. The, the idea of we only get this because we're on Xbox console is so far gone. Now the reason there's my speech, right? I, I want you to understand that I have stopped being all about that little piece of black shiny plastic for a long time. Mr. Xbox said, Colt, you sound ridiculous. Mr. Xbox, I want to help you. I know you live and die in the weeds of the console plastic war. And anybody who says I want, this is going to sound really rude. And I've been there, right? 
Anybody who says, but I want games that are u- unique to my Xbox. You have to ask yourself, why are you saying that? You're literally saying, I don't want my game to be on another platform. And there's a truth to that. Like you want it to be unique so you can buy that console and sell it. But really what it boils down to is, no, it's not even that. It's the fact that why did I even waste money on this fucking console when I could have just gotten the PS5 and, you know, gotten everything in the first place? That's the point. Is like Microsoft said they were going to make shit that you could only play on Xbox. And now that's not necessarily true because anything and everything could come to other platforms. So why didn't you just buy a PS5 in the first place and not waste your money on an Xbox if that shit's going to come? to other platforms anyway that's what they're saying playstation shouldn't get to have the game that i have special on my console it's more of an issue of marketing than anything else all right so first up woohoo so UFC fighter Sean Strickland goes on insane LG or anti LGBTQ plus rant. <gasps> oh my god! Did he say that he doesn't want to punch women? Let me guess. Next topic I want to talk about with you guys is involving this uh, MMA, this pro MMA fighter from the UFC known as Sean Strickland. Look, I'm not a sports person. I don't really watch a whole lot of sport. Mm-mm. Uh, it's just not really my thing uh, and that includes stuff like UFC uh, or MMA things of that nature but I found out about this topic actually through Bosch I saw Bosch cover this and so I decided I wanted to kind of go over it with you guys but uh, we're talking about this guy Sean Strickland and how apparently recently he went on this like weird like anti-LGBTQ rant during like one of those like press conferences you know how like after fights or like leading up to fights they'll have like these press conferences and then like they'll kind of like usually they'll discuss you know their thought process going into the fight or coming out of the fight stuff like that but- who would have guessed that a guy who's literally pumping like full of testosterone is in great physical shape and is literally what you would probably consider to be like, I guess the epitome of a fucking alpha male, whatever the fuck. Like, you know, is it any surprise that he's not really a fan of that LGBTQ mafia? It's not really to me. But like a reporter asked him about some of his anti LGBTQ comments in the past. And he kind of like went on this weird tirade. Okay. So we're gonna take a look at this. Let me actually pull up the video. So the video is here on YouTube by full send MMA. There's also other uploads of this as well. This is just the one. This is what I found. Sean Strickland after- <laughs> a woman in every kitchen, a gun in every hand based absolutely destroys reporter. So we can kind of see, we can kind of see, you know, the thought process of uh, whoever runs this channel. But in any case, we're going to take a look at this. We'll kind of give our thoughts as we go along. So without further ado, play that shit. Here we go. I did want to ask, you know, you're in Toronto. Welcome back here. It's been great. Are you Canadian? Uh, of course I am. Are you part of the fucking opposition? Are you? Uh, I don't know how to phrase that. You, I mean, you got like, fucking, nah, yeah. Well, I did want to ask. Did you vote for Trudeau? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say. So he like, got really, he got really defensive. He doesn't know what to say. Either you voted for Trudeau or you don't. And right from the get go. Did he like already know this reporter? Like, from the start? Was he already familiar with this reporter from the start? Because- no, he just knows what type of person this loser probably is asking about fucking LGBT shit. It's like, he's already going in. And, and let me tell you something right now. The man says he's not going to say, like, if you ask him, did you vote for Biden? He's like, well, I'm not going to say that's none of your business. He voted for fucking Biden. So, hey, so this is, so it's, it's not even like, the, the reporter hasn't even asked their question yet, and they're already popping off. Jeez. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Based. This is what I'm talking about, guys. The enemy. The enemy of Canada. All right. Gotta be, gotta be. The enemy? The fuck? Uh, we've got pretty supportive game lesbian community in the city. I did want to ask you something a couple years ago. He said, if I had a gay son, I would think... Oh, look, another, another, I'm saying this. Already upset. Already upset. Hey, we know what Wings would say about a gay son. If my kids grow up to be gay, I'm beating the shit out of them. But look here, <laughs> there, there's two choices in life. Wings. You pretend you're straight or I beat you to death. The question. Okay, very interesting. If you want to know the comment that the reporters talked about, I actually found the original tweet. So somebody asked them on Twitter. This was on December 27, 2021. Sean, would you rather have a gay son or a thought daughter? To which they responded, if I had a gay son, I would think I failed as a man to create such weakness. Being gay is weakness? You know, this is kind of like, it, it's crazy to me. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Seriously? Tipster doesn't understand that? Yeah. I mean, he probably doesn't consider being fat being weak either. How much like anti-LGBTQ hatred is out there? And like people are just like really open with it nowadays because, you know, this used to be the kind of thing that you would see like ages ago. People being like this open with their like ignorance and hatred towards like LGBTQ folks. But like, it's a, it, it's weakness? To have a son who's gay? I mean, that's what people always ask me is like, what would you do if you have a gay son? I'm be like, I'm not going to. Or what would you do if your son was trans? I'm like, he won't be. Like, <laughs> why am I even going to consider an impossible scenario? It's kind of pointless. If I had a whore for a daughter, I think she just wanted to be like her dad. Lol. The fuck? <laughs> if I had a whore for a daughter, I think she just wanted to be like her dad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's fucking funny, bro. I haven't ever heard that before. Fuck. Shit. Come on, you guys. A swamp. You become a champion, you become a star, and then someone Let me ask you something. Are you, are you, are you gay? No, are, are you, let me know. Are you gay? Are you gay? Like, what, would that be a problem if they were gay? 
like genuine question is i think in your mind that that would be a problem but like i not everybody is, is as hateful because this, this is very this is a very clearly a hateful person towards gay people right not everybody's as hateful as you my guy when i'm asking I'm, this is why, why you are you a gay man i'm not live at the meeting okay if you had a son why would you want a gay son that means your family lineage dies with you and then he was like you know yes he was gay You're like oh man you don't you want a grandkid no with it. Oh, man, you don't want a grandkid bro like not everybody is this bothered by their own children being like gay like i don't have any kids to be clear very clear i don't have any kids but if i had any kids and you know like my kid grew up to be gay i wouldn't give a shit I would support them being whoever they are, you know, like whatever kind of person they are, whatever kind of person they want to be, I'm 100% in support of that, right? Like, what is this? Wait, dude, you're a weak f***ing man, dude. You're like, you're part of the f***ing problem. You elected just- Do you think that- Tipster, you would support anything as long as it ended with, you know, never mind, it's whatever. I, bro, it's just like, how do you not understand why a guy wouldn't want a gay son? That's so fucking stupid that they're weak because they asked you that question or do you think that they're weak because you think that they're gay because you really wanted to know if they were gay earlier you know like with you fucking, when he sees the bank accounts like you're just fucking pathetic and and the fact that the fact that you have no fucking backbone and and has he shut they have no backbone because okay they clearly have a, more backbone than you because you got super fucking defensive when they had the balls to ask you hey you said some really fucked up shit about gay people in the past and i want to ask you about it it takes a lot of fucking balls to ask someone a question yeah, like that. Just dude, be real he's fucking a hero. About it. And look at you, you're cowering here like a little bitch. Like, I understand, like, you get into a ring and you get your ass beat for a living. And hey, you know what? That's cool. Maybe that's what masculinity looks like to you. Uh, personally, I think somebody who has the courage to step up to someone like you and ask them a really pressing question like that, yeah, I think that that takes a lot of fucking guts, all right? I don't think that this person's weak because, you know, they're gay or they're an ally to the, the gay community or anything like that. I think that it takes a lot of guts for them to stand in front of you like that and ask you that fucking question, even when you're getting crazy aggressive about it. Yeah, you're fucking that is the least courageous thing someone can do in the modern era. Being pro-gay rights is like the most safe stance on planet Earth. Country and seize bank accounts. That's like saying I don't like Hitler. Like, ooh, wow, you're so stunning and brave. Wow. Oh my God, what a crazy. That's like literally one of the safest, like lukewarm fucking stances you can have. Like, it's such a normie stance. I don't know. Like saying like, yeah, I don't fucking like Hitler, guys. It'd be like, okay, yeah, join the rest of the 99% of the population. Congratulations. Like, that's like an ice cold fucking take, bro. It's like, I, I don't know. Are we really going to pretend like standing up for gay rights is some sort of heroic stance in 2024? It's like literally the most safe shit you can do. You ask me some stupid shit like that, go fuck yourself. Move Why is that a stupid question? You're a public figure. And as public figures, you know, I'm a little bit of a public figure myself. If I say something stupid, people are going to have something to say about it. Hell, even if I don't say something stupid, but for some reason they have a problem with it, people are going to say things about the things that I say. And I just kind of have to accept it as a public figure. It kind of comes with the territory, right? So here you are. You're a very successful, you know, UFC fighter. And you said something really fucking stupid on a large public platform. Let me bring that tweet up again. How much, how much traction did that tweet get? Let me see if I can bring up this tweet again. Here we go. How much traction did that tweet get? You're someone who has a very large platform. How many followers do they have? They have over 400,000 followers on Twitter. This tweet got tons of engagement okay you're a public figure with a large public platform and you said something really stupid on it people are gonna have something to say about it what oh shit so it wasn't enough to make a comment about having a gay son thank you thank you very much for that membership i appreciate it oh so it wasn't enough god to say bro somebody in fucking tipsters chat says he might be physically strong but mentally he's weak holy shit do you even understand like, bro i'm not even gonna explain the fucking irony of that statement like, holy fuck, bro. But in order to even be that physically strong, you have to be incredibly mentally strong and disciplined. What happens is, is when you're mentally weak, you look like tipster. Say something really dumb about if you were to have a gay son and then being like weak or whatever. Now we got comments about the trans community. Oh God, this is gonna get good, isn't it? So we're when they the Bud Light sponsorship that you go so hard on Bud Light, your next fight they'll have to accept me or denounce me when, uh, when they know what they'll know what they stand for. Are you still gonna use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. 10 years ago to be trans was a, what, a mental fucking illness. And oh, wow. That's where we're going with it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay, before it we is. actually progress to what it they were still saying, is, bro. Uh, I did find a video that talks about the comments that they made about Bud Light. Uh, this was uh, apparently like a couple months ago. This is back in October. All right, let's take a look at uh, what they had to say about Bud Light. There are some they, they not like that the fact tipster, that Bud Light that's is a fucking man. Joining the UFC once again as a partner for a record $100 million plus multi year deal, sticking the place in Modelo. The brand experienced a big loss in sales after putting Dylan Mulvaney on their cans a while back. Was the Bud Light thing was so stupid. It was the dumbest fucking thing ever for, for multiple reasons. First of all, like, why do you care so much? If like a trans woman does a sponsorship with Bud Light, how does it affect your beer at all? It, it really doesn't, right? Um, uh, because you don't want to. Okay, tipster. So if a brand comes out and says we don't like gay people, are you gonna keep buying their stuff? No, you're not. So shut the fuck up, sit the fuck down, and stop acting like an oh so virtuous dipshit. Um, I don't give a shit about any of that. 
okay? Like, it just seems really fucking stupid to get bent out of shape about that. Then you had people spreading misinformation about how, like, oh, you know, when we go to the store and we buy Bud Light, we're gonna have to stare at her fucking face on the can. And it's like, no, they made one individual fucking can just for her, okay? One fucking can just for her. And they were like, oh, you know, when we buy Bud Light, we have to stare at her face on the cans. They're gonna be on the it's so dumb. Not only that, but you have to remember, right? You have to remember that right before the Bud Light thing and right before all these, like, right-wing dipshits got super fucking ass mad about a trans woman doing a sponsorship for Bud Light, they just got done making fun of they just got done making fun of left-wingers and the trans community for getting upset and trying to boycott Hogwarts Legacy, which I've already expressed my opinions on. I thought that that was like, I thought that, that was really unnecessary too. Like, I understand like people why they were upset about like Hogwarts Legacy and stuff. Like, I understand it's the whole like. Was oh, he understands why people are upset over Hogwarts Legacy, but God forbid you're upset over Bud Light. Like, listen to this fucking retard, bro. He's literally trying to point out hypocrisy, but then is literally engaging in the same hypocrisy himself. What a fucking retard. What is it, J.K. Rowling thing and the whole like turf thing or whatever? Like, I get being upset with her. That's 100. percent But the thing that I disagree with on that is people are literally getting harassed for playing the game, which that's really counterproductive for what you're trying to accomplish. But they literally just got done shitting on left wingers and shitting on the trans community about how they were triggered over Hogwarts Legacy, and then look at the shitstorm they created over Bud Fucking Light. Anyway, let's take a look at what he had to say here, though. Uh, that uh, the reporter was grilling him on. Experienced a big loss in sales. I mean, I'm not poor enough to drink Bud Light anyway, but definitely ain't now. To putting Dylan Mulvaney on their cans a while back, but Sean Strickland comes out and says he thinks he can help the brand regrow their image. So guys, I'm on my way training, and I just found out Bud Light's a new sponsor. And goddamn, I applaud you guys. I am so fucking proud of you guys for doing the right things after that. You're proud of them for doing the right thing after that fuck up. What was the fuck up? What, what was so wrong? I, I still like. I understand we're going on a year since this shit happened, but what was so wrong with Bud Light sponsoring a trans woman? I think the most ridiculous thing about this, and nobody talks about this, but Dylan Mulvaney wasn't even the only creator they did that sponsorship with. There were other creators that they did that exact same sponsorship with and did that exact same personalized can thing with, but nobody ever talks about that part. The All right, Tipster, let's do a sponsorship with 10 creators, one of which is an anti-trans, anti-gay spokesperson. You're going to focus on that one person you don't like, regardless of who the other nine people are. Stop acting like you don't fucking understand how this shit works. This is just so fucking disingenuous, man. The only reason they made a big deal about Dylan Mulvaney is because she's a trans woman, and they're just like hateful fucking people who just want to- Uh-uh, not just because Dylan is trans, but also he's like a mouthpiece and encourages kids transitioning. He's a political activist. He's not just a, oh, I'm trans and I mind my own business. No. They're one of those fucking, uh, you know, trans right activist political figure types who use social media to fucking, you know, lobby, essentially. So. Dylan literally works with the Biden administration. Exactly. Thank you. But Tipster's too fucking disingenuous to understand this shit because, you know. For another reason to jump on a, a trans person. You know how I feel about transgenders. I go fucking hard. Just what I do. I'm the biggest advocate of biological females. If I said my views on transgenders, oh I would get kicked off Instagram. But I cannot wait. Also, they're, they're openly admitting that they're hateful towards trans people. That's what that is. Oh, if I shared my views on trans people, I'd get kicked off Instagram. So they're, they're just, that's their own roundabout way of admitting, like, yeah, I, I, I hate trans people. Pick up a big old Bud Light can and fix you, Bud Light, because you guys are doing the right thing. I, Sean Strickland, a representation of the American people, are going to fix you, Bud Light. Thank you for giving me money. Thank you for supporting my platform. Oh my God, this is so dumb. Somebody said that this is uh, coping and seeding. True. You are coping. coping. I don't get it. I, I genuinely don't fucking get it. Why do people care so much, right? Like, give me a minute, give me a minute. I fucking hate everyone. I don't fucking get it, honestly. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Even if you don't understand trans people and why they are who they are and whatnot, even if you don't understand it, why do you care so much, right? Why do you fucking care so much? I because you don't hand an alcoholic a whiskey bottle, tipster. You don't give a fucking heroin addict a fresh needle and some fucking shit to shoot up. You don't give a fucking pedophile kids. If people are mentally fucking ill, you don't fucking enable that awful behavior. Oh my God. How is this controversial, bruh? This is like so fucking straightforward. This is like somebody saying I identify as disabled. Someone needs to paralyze me. Do you think that person should be allowed to paralyze themselves, Or a doctor should be able to fucking paralyze? Hell no. Like, oh my god, bro. It's just insanity. You think you should be able to give a fucking seven-year-old hormone blockers or whatever the fuck that's going to permanently damage their body when they're literally not even old enough to consent to sex? but somehow they're more than capable of consenting to permanently fucking up their physical growth and hormonal development for the rest of their life? I, it's just fucking insane to me, dude. 
how like you have to be the biggest most dis well biggest but you have to be the biggest most disingenuous fucking mouth breathing neanderthal to even fucking begin to try and defend this type of shit bro i don't know FBI with the two, if he plays the coping song, I'm leaving forever. And then FBI with the two, goodbye. Are you leaving this world forever or just the chat? I used to ask the same thing, for example, before uh, gay marriage got legalized. There were so many people that were very outspoken against, you know, gay marriage and stuff like that. And I'm like, why do you care? I remember talking to, like, religious people and asking the same question. Why do you care? Like, if at that time, I was the argument I was making was, if gay marriage gets legalized, it's not like you're going to be forced to hop into bed with a gay person. So why do you care, right? It doesn't fucking matter. Just let these people live their fucking lives the way that makes them comfortable. You know, let them be themselves. And then you go over here and you do whatever the fuck you want to do, right? It doesn't make sense to get this fucking outraged over other people just wanting to live their fucking lives, right? Even if you don't understand it, why do you care so much? Brandy Ariano donated $5. Thank Is you. There an age limit on goth mommies? Cause I'm 50 and BTW. You have to be Latino cause you are the only YouTuber who says my name right and keep it up. Thank you very much for that super chat. I do appreciate it. We have no age limit on the goth mommies. The milfs are welcome for sure. And yes, I am uh, Latino. Uh, thank you very much for that super chat. Yeah, no age limits. Hopefully that's only upwards. I'm gonna help you guys. You know, Bud Light has to be watched. All right, so I just wanted to play his comments really, but uh, yeah, he had some dumb comments about the whole Bud Light thing. Let me run this back a little bit though. Here we go. When, uh, when they know what, when they know what they stand for. Are you still using your flight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans was a, what, a mental fucking illness. And now literally everything that comes out of their mouth in regards to you know gay is, people or trans people, it's is, all the typical fucking right wing bigoted shit that you like expect to hear from one of these like brain dead idiots. I see somebody in the chat talking about CTE. Like this guy's probably brain damaged. Okay, this guy's taking multiple hits to the head, and he's just like he's dumb. Like he's very very dumb. Now all of a sudden, people like you have weaseled your way in the world. You are you are an infection. Yeah. How, how dare we allow? How dare we accept trans people and allow them to just live their lives and just, it, it, it's like I said, even if you don't understand it, they're not hurting anyone, okay? Trans people existing or gay people existing, it doesn't hurt anyone. I genuinely don't understand why these people care so much. Okay, what? tipster, so it's perfectly fine to give an alcoholic more alcohol. You know, fuck it, man. We should give drunk people car keys. Like, I don't fucking know, bro. It's just like fucking insane, man. They're only going to hurt themselves. That's so stupid. Yeah, let's legalize everything, bro. Because, you know, as long as they're not hurting anyone, it's fine, right? We should have no morals or fucking human decency. As long as it's not hurting anyone, dude. I don't know, man. I fucking hate this type of shit. Lugia with the two. Did you see James O'Keefe wanted to talk to Dylan? Uh, no. I did not. Hi. I... You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of fucking you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not Dude is big mad. He's so fucking mad. Not buying your fucking bullshit, you're fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right. Chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could fucking school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sex. It's always this bullshit about like the kids at school or whatever and what they're learning. Like, it's weird to me because like, I don't you even. You don't have kids, tipster. You don't understand. You have fucking video game knickknacks. Remember, you know, I just turned 37 years old. And I even remember, like, when I was in school, like, sex ed was a thing. They talk about, like, sex ed, like, it's this totally new fucking thing that, like, oh, yeah, they didn't tell you that, oh, tipster, little 13 year old boy, if you're playing with girls' toys, you can get your penis cut off. Yeah, that's not sex ed, you fucking tard. Sex ed is literally straight sex, and that's it. That is literally it. Bruh. Sex ed is literally the birds and the bees. That's fucking it, dude. It's science. It's not, you know, oh, if you like men, you can have anal sex. That That's not fucking sex ed. Sex ed has to do with biology and reproduction. This fucking LGBT shit is fucking grooming. Because you're talking about sexual orientation and preferences and all this type of shit with a bunch of kids, uh, at least woke people are pushing sex education onto like kids and stuff. As, as far back as I remember, like it's been around for a long time teaching sex education to like kids and stuff. And like, what's weird to me is it's like oh they talk God. about like they're indoctrinated. Yeah, dude, it, it's always been sex education. Yeah, let's not pretend that it hasn't changed, right? Because oh, it's still the exact same thing as it was thirty years ago. Yeah, shut the fuck up, bro. See, this is he's just a disingenuous fucking douche, bro. He's an absolute fucking disingenuous douche. Like he is literally the epitome of a fucking shit lib.
discriminating kids to be gay or trans or whatever. It's not like that, okay? Like, that's not how the conversation happens. I remember the first time I had sex education as part of my schooling uh, was in fifth grade, elementary school. And to be clear, like, they didn't really talk about anything crazy graphic or anything. Essentially, what they were talking about is like, hey, you know, your body's gonna be changing a little bit. You're gonna need, you know, to engage in better hygiene, you know, because you're gonna start getting acne, so you need to make sure to clean your face and stuff. And uh, you're gonna be sweating a little bit more, so you gotta use deodorant for the girls. Hey, you know, tampons and pads exist, and you're gonna have to start using those, that sort of thing. So it was mostly the hygiene side of things. But they also kind of told you, like, hey, you know, uh, I'm paraphrasing because you got to remember, like, I just turned 37 years old, so I don't remember the exact words that were used. Thank you. I mean, if that's what you call it when I bang your mom and my jizz wets the bed sheets, then absolutely. Thank you for the super chat. I do appreciate it. But like they would say something along the lines of like, hey, you know, you're gonna have like feelings towards, you know, other people, you know, and in most cases, you're gonna have feelings towards people. Like if you're a boy, you might have feelings towards someone who's a girl. Some of you may have feelings towards someone who's the same as you. They wouldn't use like terms like same sex or anything like that. No, but, you know, they some of wouldn't. You Shut the fuck up. They would not do that shit 20 something years ago. He is lying through his fucking gullet. You may have feelings for someone who's the same as you. If you're a boy, you might have feelings for a boy and a girl's girl, etc. Right? No, they um, didn't. But it was nothing like super fucking sexual or whatever. It was just kind of explaining the basics to them, okay? And obviously, as you get to higher grade levels, then it gets a little bit more in detail and stuff. But like, this is not a new thing. My point is, this is not a new thing. You only have sex ed once. What do you mean? The older you get, it gets more detailed. Sounds like you're fucking groomed, bro. I saw with the five most states require guardian consent even at 18 to get a tattoo, but mutilating your gender has nothing to see. Exactly. It's perfectly fine to, you know, stunt the growth of your body by blocking your body's ability to produce natural hormones. You know, that's completely fine. But tattoos, smoking, drinking, voting, driving, all that shit, you know, that's that's too much. And they're not going around like telling kids because this is the thing they, they think is, is going on. Hey, you behave in a way that normally someone like you doesn't behave like if you're a boy. You don't behave like a boy. So we think you should be a girl. Right? Like actually telling kids to transition. So that's not what happens. That, that is not what fucking happens. That is like the dumbest fucking lie. It is what happens now, you dumbass. Things change. <gasps> Whoa, dude. Things don't stay the same. Crazy. And people just eat it up. They just parrot that shit as if it's fucking true. And it's, it's just not. Actual preference. Like, dude, this guy's a fucking enemy. Or like, oh, you know what? You should be gay. Like, like a teacher's going up to a kid and being like, hey, you should be gay. You should be your they little do. boy. You should be into other little boy. It doesn't fucking work that way. That's not how that conversation happens. If you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world, it's that motherfucker right there asking me stupid fucking questions. It's such a stupid question to hold you accountable for the dumb shit you've said. Okay, my guy. Jeez. It literally Jeez does happen. Weeds. Anyway, so that's their like weird rant right there. The last thing I want to wrap up with this particular topic here. The last thing I want to wrap up with this particular topic. And let me get rid of this chatter who's clearly here just to troll. Oh, Trans Girl Jade already took care of it. Thank you. Shout out to Trans Girl Jade. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Dana White's based as well. Wanna take a look at this bro. on Pink News? It says UFC CEO Dana White defends Sean Strickland after homophobic rant, free speech brother. <laughs> okay. UC fighter, uh, UC fighting champion, CEO, and President Dana White uh, has defended Sean Strickland after his uh, and his right to free speech after the fighter faced backlash for his homophobic and transphobic comments. In the build up to his fight against, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce that name, so I'm not even going to try. Whatever. On Saturday, uh, the 20th of January, so this just happened, basically. Which he ultimately lost. Oh, you lost the fight. Oh, you poor guy. I feel, I'm so sorry. Damn. You act like a little bitch right now. Oh, somebody said coping and seating? Better than losing a fight to a staircase. Oh, there's probably a lot of coping and seating after oh. their loss. Maybe that's why they were so mad, because we're going into the fight knowing that they were going to lose. Maybe that's what happened. You think so, chat? Let me get some ones in the chat if you think that maybe that's what happened. Maybe that's why they were so angry. Stop being such a- That chair is really holding it down, bro. Little gay homo queer. Uh, so anyway, uh, where were we? Following calls for Strickland to face some sort of punishment for his homophobic and transphobic comments, UFC President Dana White made it clear he has no such plans. While White made it clear he neither condoned nor denounced Strickland's comments, he told press that he had no interest in policing fighters' beliefs. I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no uh, leashes on any of them. He said on Saturday's uh, UFC 297 fight. That's ridiculous to say. I give somebody a leash. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want. They can believe whatever they want. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And it's true. You know, people are free to believe whatever they want, but we're also free. Unless to Tipster disagrees with it, they call you a fucking idiot for it. So in short, I think this guy's a piece of trash, honestly. I, I genuinely don't understand why people care so much about how other people live their fucking lives. But that's the world we live in, you know? People are so obsessed. Because it's not just about how they live their life. Because it's not just enough. You have to give them special treatment. You have to fucking, you know, cater towards them. You have to grant them special treatment. You know, it's not enough to use a fucking normal bathroom. Now they have to use a fucking gender neutral bathroom or it's like all this other shit that comes with it. Now they want their fucking hormones paid for by healthcare. It's like, bruh, no, it's not just I want to live my life. It's no, they want a fucking special treatment or, you know, to be first class citizens and everybody else gets to be a subservient fucking base. Eh, FBI with the two, nah, I'm a game and myself now. Good. No more FBI. With how other people live their lives, it doesn't fucking matter. It has no impact on you whatsoever. 
So shut the fuck yes, up. Yes, it does, you fucking dipshit. If you would leave your fucking little nerd cave, you would realize that. Nobody wants to hear your dog shit opinions anyway. Nobody wants to hear your dog shit opinions anyway. Spends 24 minutes listening to his dog shit opinions. Bruh. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, all right, here we go. We go to Juan's fucking, you know, lady love. Brett Cooper. Guys, today we are talking about the infamous ick list. Ugh, as if. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, allow me to enlighten you because the subject is very funny and it has been trending on social media for a while. It's not really a specific trend that's happening right now. It's just been going on for a couple of years. More and more people are doing it and more and more people are taking it seriously, which is why we're going to discuss it. So the word ick entered the mainstream with women finding icks or red flags about their prospective partners or their boyfriends, husbands, fiancés, whatever. This really started- They drive a Prius. As a lighthearted, not serious, funny trend, but with this latest list of icks, so that ten times fast, that seems never ending, I think this whole trend is revealing something that is very harmful about the dating environment of our current generation. We're gonna get into that today. Before we do, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Guys, she's fighting for us. She cares about us, guys. She wants us to do well in life. I wish I could find a girlfriend like her. And ring that notification bell. God, so you never bro, this this is like some fucking psyop shit, bro. Salute to Ben Shapiro because he fucking marketed her right section episode. All right, so it's mainly women that post these icks, and they are doing it all the time. So one TikTok account took it upon himself to compile an insane list of these women's dating icks. And to all my guys out there, I'm going to warn you in advance, you are shit out of luck, at least according to the, uh, let's see, number 585th ick, which is the latest addition to this list. There are 585 reasons that women apparently do not like you and do not want to date you. Dear God, all right, let's watch this video. When he takes a nap, it irrationally annoys me. Ick videos going down. There we go. 585. Don't take a nap. Nope. That's the latest, guys. You can't. The caption reads, we can't even rest without it being a problem. No, you cannot, because napping might irrationally annoy your partner. Somebody commented and said, I must admit, after being single, I have a nap all the time. Nobody gets mad at me. Sometimes I text my ex to tell her I'm napping. Somebody else said he only takes a nap to avoid talking to her. That might be the case. Somebody else said, so they have a list of what they don't like. Can we, LOL? And somebody said, no, we can't, or we'll get canceled. Yes! Like, honestly, just imagine if this was a trend among men complaining about women. The shrieking and crying that would occur online would literally shake the earth. It really reminds me of this thing that happened on a college campus. I don't remember what school it was at particularly, but these women compiled a list online of men that they had gone out on dates with that they- Yeah, I mean, I don't take naps, so I don't really care. They thought were harmful, dangerous, weird, and kind of like as a warning for other women, like don't go out with them. You could go and search and see if the guy that you were dating or wanted to go out with was on this list. And guys were speaking out and saying, well, just because you didn't like me doesn't mean that somebody else is gonna like me. And just because you thought we had a weird interaction doesn't mean that I'm, you know, harmful. And they were saying, what if we made a list about you? And obviously the women were like, ah! That is what would happen. That is exactly what would happen if men started compiling icks about women. But I digress. Here is yet another ick. What gives you the ick? When a boy puts a seatbelt on in the car, it repulses me. <laughs> repulses me. Oh, we're actually at 588 now. Don't put on a seatbelt. Don't be safe. She All right, if that's in the back seat, I agree. Because what are you, 10? It doesn't care if you get in a car crash and die. Because at least she wouldn't have had the ick. The caption on that one is, we're not even allowed to follow the law anymore. No, that is an ick in itself, actually. Don't bend an to the government. <laughs> I'm not actually being serious, but I kind of am. Now, with this girl, I don't really get the sense that she's joking. Also, she's drunk, so drunk words are sober thoughts. Just saying. Like, I think that actually might be a thought that exists in her brain. Somebody commented and said, sorry, officer, but it gives my missus the ick. Somebody else said, at this point, I don't even want to have a girlfriend. Somebody else said, these videos totally made me lose the want for a girlfriend. And guys, this is the problem. This is a silly trend. It's a stupid thing that took off on TikTok, but it is actually a problem because these types of obnoxious statements is yet another reason why there is a growing divide between men and women in our dating world. And why more and more men are just throwing up their hands No, saying, they're not. Oh my God. Bro, this is dumb. Like, are you really going to act like this is serious shit? Like, come on, bro. Most of these are probably a joke or just girls being overdramatic for social media attention. Like, come on now. Saying, fine, I won't date at all. We've talked about that a lot. We've talked about how men are just saying, nope. <laughs> if you're taking this type of shit seriously, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't need to date. I don't want to date. I don't want to even try. I don't want to be on dating apps. And you wonder why. You seriously wonder why. Like, wake up, ladies. You're making requests like these. Like, I've been sitting here and I'm genuinely trying guys, to think about she it. She totally but I think gets that the I only male struggle. Have one ick, and it's not even really about guys specifically. It's about people who feed their dogs dead food. That is my ick. And that is why Rough Greens is so important to me. And by feeding my dogs Rocky and Tater Rough Greens every single morning, I'm making sure that I'm not giving myself, again, that is Rough Greens problem with you there will be no more icks on my watch but i digress here's another real ick, ick. i don't like women know how to cook because why do you know how to cook that's a problem <laughs> excuse me <laughs> based i thought that you wanted men to do everything for you here we go oh the one right before that don't cry okay don't know how to cook i thought that that was such a turn off like you meet a guy and all he knows how to make are microwavable chicken nuggets that's probably on the list chicken nuggets is what my family like i seriously would assume that that is a green flag in my eyes that is a major green flag like where are these expectations coming from it makes no sense but they don't stop somebody said she'll change her mind in a few years she's going to be looking for a guy that cooks yes you will be another guy said damn what i gotta eat tv dinners and fast food my whole life according to that girl you might have to 
I mean, the whole thing is just ridiculous. Men need to be men and they need to provide, but don't be too masculine because that's sexist and patriarchal, but you should never assume that a woman has to cook and clean, but also if you know how to cook as a man, that's a red flag. What do women want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? Can you imagine being a 22 year old man on TikTok in our modern era, scrolling and seeing these types of videos and like your head is exploding. Like I genuinely don't know what I have to do because that- Bro, if you actually take that type of shit seriously, then I don't know, maybe you shouldn't reproduce thing I do is right. Even if it's a joke, the fact that this is out there, it is obviously confusing. And no wonder guys are throwing in the towel. Now I've shown you a few videos of this guy adding them to the list. There are tons of other videos out there with more extended explanations for why certain things are an ick, but I wanted to pause on some of his videos while he's scrolling to see what the other icks were. And just remember, this list is almost 600 items long now. I want to read you some of my favorites. Don't smile. Don't be happy. Don't be truthful. Don't walk downhill. Don't tie your shoes, but I'm sure that having Velcro shoes is a dick as well. Ew, no David. Don't be born in a certain month or listen to country music. Don't have a birthday. No, could you just not be born? Could you be like Zeus's daughter and just come out of his head? Maybe that'd be great. Don't fall over. Don't have a bath. Don't have a hobby. Don't carry a bag. Don't breathe. Don't put your car blinkers on. That's a personal favorite of mine. Don't breathe while talking. Don't have a shower. Don't go bowling. They would not like to know that my fiance was on the varsity bowling team. <laughs> and I love him for that. Don't be named something starting with a J. Don't run in water. Don't go skiing. Don't walk up steps. So you can't walk downhill, but you also can't go on steps. You just need to stay in one place. You need to walk completely horizontally. You want to climb a mountain? So sorry. You can yeah, I'm sure these are all 100% legit, right? Cannot. Don't eat chicken nuggets. What did I tell you? I, I agree with that. If you're fucking over the age of 25 and you're ordering chicken nuggies, if you go out to eat, then yeah, that is pretty gross. That was gonna be a problem. But you also can't cook. Don't have OCD. Like, bro, if you're like a grown ass man and you go to a restaurant and you order chicken nuggies, like, yeah, you're a child. Don't be affected by wind. Like, are you... It's so dumb, guys. It's so dumb. And yes, I can take a joke. I understand that some of these are sarcastic and some girls are looking for a reaction. They want to get a rise out of guys. But again, the fact that it is normal and acceptable and people like to make fun of men for totally normal and often very nice good things is ridiculous. And that is the real problem. And a lot of these women are not joking. They aren't making jokes. They are genuinely turned off by some of these things. And we've talked about this before, but it's getting to the point where men are not only giving up on dating, but they are becoming proud of themselves for giving up on the entire concept, which is a sad reality that all of this has resulted in. Here's an article why men have given up on dating, understanding the hashtag MGTOW uh, movement, and that stands oh for the God, not the big towels. No, big towels have not given Given up on dating they're just a bunch of fucking incels who you know have a superiority complex now because they think not dating makes them better than everyone else please do not fucking even try to frame these fucking losers in a good light mig towels are some of the biggest pieces of shit on planet earth like they're just literal fucking incels with a superiority complex they think them not being able to get laid has somehow made them better than everyone the men going their own way movement and this article highlights it and it explains some of the reasons why men have gone their own way and have given up on dating and it directly correlates to the icks that so many of these women are making fun of and talking about online one guy said quote i haven't completely given up on dating women but i'm currently on a hiatus i may end up alone forever probably because my standards are still too high still i won't settle until i can find someone who holds herself to the same standards that she holds me to that's so good and you know what i can't fault him for it at all because that's very understandable oh, that's God. not bad yeah wait till you see what he looks like I want an 8 out of 10 chick, and he looks like a fucking beaver with a neck beard. I guarantee, bro, like, there, I have never seen an attractive MGTOW. Every single MGTOW I've seen is either insanely fucking fat, like, just deformed, or they're, like, broke as shit, wearing some crusty-ass clothing in, like, a beat-up old car living with their parents. Like, bruh. I've never seen a MIG towel that looks normal, I guess is what I'm getting at. At all. If women are going to have these crazy ick lists and these crazy demands, then they should be holding themselves to an equal standard of perfection that they are expecting. Here's a story from another man. He said, to be honest, I'm just tired. I feel like every girl I meet has a list of expectations for me. I just want to be myself. Literally a list of expectations. And like I've said before, and like I will always say, men oh, and women- Oh no, you actually- See, right there is a bad fucking mentality. Yes. Why the fuck wouldn't a girl have a list of expectations for you? I mean, these are the same guys that probably be like, I want a trad wife. Well, you do realize the whole trad wife concept works on the expectation that you're going to be a strong man that provides for her, right? Oh, well, you know, expectations are now like, dude, it's just delusion, bro. It's absolute delusion for a lot of these guys. No, like, should have standards. That is an extremely important and healthy practice in dating. But as we've seen online, expectations are getting blurred with superficial red flags and icks, and it is becoming impossible for men to keep up. It's becoming impossible for them to figure out what is sarcastic, what's a joke, or what is some actually very unrealistic... All right, listen to this. All right, so she's engaged, guys. And how old is she, like, 22? Is she really the person who, like, literally is marrying her college boyfriend? She's the person who's going to lecture everybody about the current state of the dating market. Like, come on, bro. This is not the type of person you should be listening to. This is obvious engagement bait. This is a fucking uh, demoralization campaign. 
unrealistic standard that they have to live up to. Another guy said, I do not feel motivated to put in the effort. It's been a year since I've given up dating and I've grown to love my peace where I do not have to have my every action purchased and thought questioned or attacked. Like that's genuinely heartbreaking. They don't feel like they can be themselves. They don't feel like they're respected. Everything they do is attacked. Again, no wonder they've given up on dating. That is not what dating- Yes, if you're a fucking anime nerd who doesn't shower more than twice a week and you live at home with your parents and work part-time at the grocery store because you just want to have enough money to pay for your fucking Crunchyroll membership, yes, you should not be who you are at that point. You need to change. Being who you are is not always a good thing. You have to be a good person in the first place to be who you are. Just copping out and saying, I'm going to be who I am. I'm not going to change for anyone. Then, yeah, no. That's a horrible mentality to have. Because, like, bro, relationships are all about compromise. So if two people refuse to change who they are as a person to any degree, a relationship is never going to fucking work. This is such dumb fucking advice. Never change who you are. Just be yourself. Like, yeah, that'll, that'll work out great. <laughs> it's fucking wild, man. Dating should feel like. If you expect a man to treat you like a princess, to give up things that you don't like, to be this perfect person for you that you have in your list, if you want him to put in the work, you need to treat him with the same kindness, the same respect, and the same adoration that he has for you. And if he has a list, you better figure out a way to fall in line. It's really not that complicated. Well, guys, I hope you liked that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Like, you will never get along with someone, regardless of if you're dating them, friends with them, their family, they're a coworker. If you never compromise or change who you are to any degree you will never have a successful relationship of any form with a human you cannot fucking just be who you are and compromise for no one if you ever want to have a successful relationship of any nature in your life that will never fucking happen it doesn't matter how great you think you are you have to fucking change to some degree to get along with someone because no one is a fucking mirror image of yourself. And even if they are a mirror image of yourself, you're going to fucking hate that person because there's not enough room for two of the same people in a friendship, relationship, or whatever it is. Like, bro, this is so dumb, man. That is horrible advice. But anyway, don't take, all right, let, let's just make this clear. Don't base your impression of what the real world is like based off of TikTok clips. Is that really such a, you know, hard thing to establish? Maybe we shouldn't base our view on reality over 20 second TikTok clips. <laughs> Maybe that's the takeaway, guys. Stop basing your view of reality off of what you see on fucking TikTok. It's just like, oh, dude, this shit's obnoxious. That is such obvious incel bait. She totally understands, dude. Hold on. I guarantee you that's what the, hold, let's, Welcome let's back to the, the top comments are. No one wants to put into, wait, work into a relationship anymore. They want a perfect ideal person. Yeah, exactly. See, this person's actually not too bad. The best advice I was ever given is find someone who's willing to grow with you. Yes, change. You have to change in a relationship. All right, this person actually understands it. Thank you. I'm glad that not everybody is fucking brain dead. Brev finally admits dating is impossible as a 23-year-old man. Yeah, this is a trend among others. Has killed my hope of a family. A good relationship made me worried to get into one or even try. Yeah, exactly. Congratulations, you fell for the fucking demoralization campaign, you dumbass. If a man posted a list of icks, he would immediately be attacked and canceled. No, he wouldn't. I could tell you an ick right now. Makeup. Fake tits. Um... Hmm, what else is an ick? Tattoos. That's gross. O excessive piercings. Um, a fucking crow's laugh, or whatever the fuck that obnoxious, like, chick laugh is, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, lip fillers are gross. Hmm. Black fingernail polish. That's fucking horrible. Uh, Birkenstocks. <laughs> Dyed hair. 
tie-dye t-shirts, stickers on their computer. Um, What else? A broken phone screen. That's another one. Long nails. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. Ever calls you daddy. Ugh. Gross. Um, I don't know. I could probably come up with a list. Yeah, broken screen means the person is broke. Exactly. They can't even afford Apple Care, bro. Like, come on now. That's $13 a month. Is a feminist? Eh, I don't blame women for being feminists because they're actually women. So it makes sense that, you know. Most women who claim to be feminists aren't fucking feminazis. There's a big difference. So I, I don't... That's like saying that, you know, a black person is a supporter of BLM. Like, yeah, no shit. Congrats. <laughs> like, they obviously agree with the concept. They may not agree with everything the organization does, but yeah... The general principle, I'd say, yeah. It's probably a safe bet. Oh, yeah, short hair is definitely an ick. Or lipstick. Ugh, dude, I fucking... Like, thick lipstick. You know those bitches that put lipstick not just on their lips, but they put it, like, over top of their lip to make their lips look bigger? Ooh, dude, that's so gross. Like, that fucking nasty, like, ugh. Dude, I fucking hate lipstick. What, seeing lipstick on a... All right, that's another one. Lipstick on a glass. Oh, dude. Or a straw. There's nothing more foul than looking at someone take a sip of their drink and they leave lipstick on, like, the fucking rim of their glass or on the straw. That is disgusting. I can't fucking stand that shit. Ugh, dude, it's just gross. Lipstick is one of the most disgusting things I think I have ever seen in the existence of humankind, bruh. Like, yeah. I don't know why you want to smear shit on your lips. That is so gross. And, it, bro, lipstick breath, too. Ugh. Ugh. Dude, now I'm getting the fucking ick remembering this shit. Also coffee breath, but, yeah. That's not really a girl thing. That's an everybody thing. Dude, the smell of lipstick on someone's breath is disgusting. Colored cont? Who cares about that? Colored contacts? Do people even do that? But, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I could easily come up with a list of icks. Look at Tipster. Oh, yeah. And I investigated Mexico's deadly Coca-Cola. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, another another ick is when a girl says bruh. That's another one. Stay away at that point. That means she's been passed around like a blunt at a fucking hippie festival. Is women having male friends an ick? No, because girls can genuinely be friends with guys. Guys cannot genuinely be friends with girls without actually wanting to fuck them on some level. Like, most guys are never going to be friends with a girl unless they're actually, like, somewhat attracted to her. 
but girls can be friendly with a guy and have zero interest in like dating or hooking up with them. So that's just how it is. Would I let my wife have male friends? Dude, I wouldn't even let her leave the house. She wouldn't even have access to the internet, bro. She would be chained up in the basement and maybe get a few minutes of sunlight a day. But I find most women attract I find most women in real life attractive as long as they're not fat or tatted up. But yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like, bro, like, compared to, like, fucking, you know, Instagram thoughts and Hollywood actresses, I see some straight-up 10 out of 10s in real life versus on the internet, so. I'm way more attracted to chicks that I see, like, in the real versus a bunch of fucking images on the fucking computer, but, you know. This is how I play the game! Four DSP reacts, explaining the situation that's going on in the channel and the fact that I'm going to have to redo the memberships and all of that. And basically, the reason I posted up the video is because I said to everyone, "Hey, I need feedback." Damn, that pig I ass dog exactly. is like, uh, bro. My dog is like eating, and he's over there like, <laughs> and still trying to eat at the same time. Like he's just pigging out like a fucking hog. Uh, what you think? Or if you're a current member of DSP reacts, would you be willing once I cancel the existing reacts. membership tiers to join again <clears throat> as middle tier to keep the channel running? You know, is it worth it for you to pay two extra dollars to have Q&A questions? Or maybe you just like the... Griffin acting like he ain't trying to get that Belle Delphine pussy. Uh, before she got titty... Or her titties fucking done. And before she did actual porn, maybe. But I ain't trying to fuck a literal porn star with fake tits, bro. That ain't a thing for me. But hey, to each their own. The channel enough that you want Beforehand, to maybe. But yeah. Keep it going. They would do that. It sucks that I, I really can't add any more value. But I have to increase the price to keep the channel alive and not have it be ruined. She belongs by to the fucking streets sitcom. now, bro. Uh, illegitimate memberships, right? So, yeah. Uh, so here's the thing. I post the video up, and I went to sleep basically. And this morning I woke up, and it's got like seven hundred views. So people watched it. You know that channel uh, in general, the videos only get around three hundred views. So to get seven hundred views, it means people watched it. And I go and I check, and I only got maybe. A couple comments that were that were actually like real feedback, you know, all the idiotic trolls comment, and none of their show, comments show up because they're idiots. So they just literally like to waste their life. They're that stupid. I mean, just think about that. I have three channels. All of them are set up that YouTube auto sorts comments. So the moment that you post up something that's a swear or something you know fucked up, it blocks it. So your comments are not gonna ever show up on the video. Yet there's people who literally waste hours of their life posting up all these comments. They're that stupid. I mean, I don't know how much more brain dead you could prove yourself to be. And I wish that I was like, oh, well, Phil's making fun. No, I'm not making fun. Like this is a legitimate observation. If you know that the comments are not just open to say whatever toxic thing you want and you sit there spending hours posting up toxic comments, you are actually stupid. And you have to get a moment of self-awareness to realize you could be doing anything else with your time, and it's better for you. Like, you could be wiping your ass, and it's more productive. You could pick your nose, and it's more productive. You know what I mean? Like, these people are that dumb. Oh my That's god, right. he's drinking salt. So anyway, um, like I said, I looked, and maybe there was a small handful of comments, and it was like, one person was like, absolutely, I'll upgrade, that's fine. Another person was like, meh, I don't think I'm gonna upgrade. And then I looked, and the person wasn't a member. It was a fucking idiot lying. I was like, wait a minute, this person was never a member to begin with. One good Samaritan. So anyway, I didn't really get much feedback, and that kind of sucks. I was actually hoping to get at least a few dozen people who were yeah, like, oh, yeah, I don't know, member. man. Phil bitching about people, you know, becoming members is one of the funniest fucking things. Like, even if they're not gifting a ton of money compared to the U.S. pricing, it's still money. Like, are you really upset that somebody's giving you money in the wrong currency? Like, that's just so fucking pathetic, man. And, you know, I'm either going to do it or not. Right now, I have no clue what's going to happen. And that makes me nervous. Because there's two reasons why that makes me nervous. Reason number one is because... I like DSP Reacts. I like the idea of having a channel where I can react to content. We can do a weekly show. I can do reviews. I can do food vlogs. I like having that channel. And that content would not fit here. You understand? It has to be kind of its own separate thing. But I have to justify the existence of the time and effort I put into that channel. So it has to at least make something. It can't, I can't just do it for free as a hobby. It has to at least generate some revenue. You know, it's part of a business. So basically, you know, I, I, I'm nervous that I'm going to make this change. And people are not going to understand. And then we're going to go from having 100 paid members down to like 20. 
<gasps> and that's gonna kill the channel, oh you know, God. because this is the other half. That channel does make me a chunk, not a giant chunk, but a chunk of income every month, which makes it viable to do. All right, <clears throat> if that income goes away because of this nonsense going oh, on, that I can't wage control quit. the fix. All right, then I can't do the channel anymore. I don't want to say goodbye that's to these right, I literally can't do it. I love doing content for it. I wish I could do more, but more people have said outright they want more gameplay than anything else. When I was doing more react stuff last year, I got complaints, so that's why I've limited how much I put on. Those it. Wasn't I don't want to see a year's worth of effort I'm and doing... time and Wait, your guys' viewership. Be meaningless up? because of trolls. You know what I mean? I want to take the power out of the hands of the trolls. But I Pro can't do Jared it. Bro, Jared wants can't. Griffin nudes. Bro, he literally had a fucking cock rating board or whatever the fuck. Where you would go in and put your fucking meat pics up on his website. Like, yeah, he probably would. Shit's sus as fuck, man. I don't know. That whole Pro Jared situation was wild. By letting me know that, you know, you understand what's going on and that you're going go to go and still support the channel, you know? So hopefully that's what'll happen. You know, I guess we'll see. But it's greed. It's greed. Greed is massively strong. I have no fucking self control. Basically, I think what I'm gonna do is either tonight or tomorrow, likely tomorrow, um, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna cancel the standard and super member tiers. I'm gonna set up two new tiers, entry and submissions. And that it takes about a day because YouTube technically has to approve those tiers. So I, I'll put them in and once YouTube approves Would I allow your wife to get a tit no. Hell no. Unless it was like a reduction. That I could see. But no, dude, I don't want fake titties. That shit's gross. Them, then I'll officially launch them. Fake titties are nasty. I'd rather her have a fucking, like, literal fucking surfboard figure than have fake titties and ass. And I'll have to do, you know, a video explaining, hey, this change has been made. Please now go re-up re, re memberships now or join at the new membership level you want now because, I, you know, the support is needed to keep the channel going. And then what I got to do is get the threads up for those new levels so people can submit clips for Sunday show. All right, or else it's just going to be ultra member submissions, which means it's going to be like two parts, and that's it. So, you know, that's what we got to do. Um, I, I certainly hope that people are going to re-up their membership, or not re-up, but, you know, sign up for the new membership levels, and that the show can continue. I would really, really, really hate for the show, or the channel to fail now because of an uncontrollable thing by the troll. I don't want to give the trolls power, you understand? Because a lot of people are like, oh, why did you ever talk about it? Because the trolls were already affecting all my content negatively. If you don't know, there's a million attempts that these idiots try to do to ruin things for me. My business and my personal life, they do it all the time. I don't mention it. It's only when it directly affects stuff that I have to mention it. I had to mention it in this case. You guys were seeing all these gifted memberships come in, and none of them were real. You know, we had goals and things every day, and the goals were being smashed, and nothing was happening. I wasn't benefiting from it, right? People were abusing this. You needed to know about it. Or else everyone's, like I said, people, there were legit people who thought, oh, Phil's made like thousands of extra dollars this month. I made less this month than I usually do, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Because oh I want to let you know, God. very matter-of-factly, where I am right now in January, because it ain't good because of all this going on. But that Wait, how would you make less money if there's more gifted memberships in general? Like... Listen to that for a sec. He made less money because people gifted more memberships, even if the memberships aren't at the same currency. If you're getting more on top of what you already normally get, then what's wrong with that? That's the thing. People are looking at the channel, and I was tracking memberships, and they're like, <clears throat> Whoa, Phil has like over 1,000 members. He's doing super good this month. That's great. And that means I don't have to help support this month because he's already doing so good. It was the opposite. But I didn't even know that until I figured out what was really going on. And it's like, well, then I got to tell everyone, right? So then I tell everyone, oh, why'd you talk about the trolls? What are you, what are you stupid? Because you have to. When they're directly affecting something public, you have to explain. If it's anything else that doesn't affect a stream that you don't, it's in my private life, I don't tell you guys. Like I said, they try it all the time to do that shit, and I just ignore it, and I don't tell you guys about it. It's only when it directly affects you guys publicly that you need to know about it, all right? Greed is a very powerful thing, my friends. You gotta be very careful, because then they're dancing the line between meaningful content that you can trust and someone who's always just out to make a buck, and then why are you supporting them? You know, I hate to say it, it's just sad when you see someone go down that path. Um, and a lot of people have done that over the years. 1,300 new memberships on top of the existing memberships that we had. All right? So in total, right now, this channel currently has 1,655 memberships. Yeah. <laughs> but if you actually do the math on how many of those are legit and I'm actually getting paid for... All right, it's only around 500. Now, last month, I had over 800, and those were all legit. All right, so the funny part about this whole thing is on paper, it looks like I'm doing so much better, and in reality, I'm doing way worse. In fact, you know, looking at the statistics here, I'm staring at it. It says revenue that you made on memberships now versus last month. Okay, no exaggeration, it claims that I have lost money. You know, last month, I, I had a certain amount, and it says, What here, is it? What's the total? Read it out, Phil. Did he lose $10 or something? Now he's going to cry? About 37% decrease. Oh my money god, I guys. I made less money than I made last month on YouTube. I'm going to fucking kill myself.
please open your wallets and give me all of your monies. Open your wallets and give me all of your monies. Oh my god. Dude, it's just ugh. He's so fucking It's like literally the last person you'd ever want to give money to. Got memberships. <gasps> oh my god. Right? Now why have I lost 37% of my revenue on memberships? Because of the trolls. And this is bullshit. They shouldn't have that kind of power on the channel and they just do. And there's nothing that I can do to fix that. Okay. Yes, you lost revenue by trolls giving you money you wouldn't have normally gotten otherwise. Make that make sense. Um, I went from a situation where this channel was strong and doing really well in December, and people were not only becoming members, but gifting memberships to the community, and there was this feeling of awesome support all around for the holidays, right? And then in the last week and a half, two weeks, the that Lugia these with the one? Out, Thanks, man. all that's gone away because but... no you're poor! Member if you're, getting a gifted membership. <laughs> you're fucking poor! Right? So basically what's happened is literally only a very small handful of people are becoming members now. So, and this is just now. We still have over Ooh, a week left in the month, Only a small right? amount. So, within two weeks, we I'm down 37% revenue. Can you imagine? And, you know, another week, I might be down 50, 60% revenue for memberships this month. And memberships are a good chunk of the revenue I make on DSP Gaming. Okay? That's awful. Help! And that's, again, that's not, oh, the ad revenue's down and that's gonna come back. That's, the trolls have broken YouTube. And I can't fix that. Okay? So, basically what, I, what I'd like to say here is, thank you guys, because everything else you've been doing, super chats, tips, Engaging in the streams, everything's been great. But this memberships thing potentially is going to hurt me bad. Now, at the same time that's going on, keep in mind, I have to now change all the memberships on DSP Reacts, right? So now what happens if I do that and half the people don't become members over there? So now not only am I down 37% revenue on this channel, now I lose the revenue on that channel too. Now what am I going to do? That's the situation I'm in right now. So I don't feel good. I feel very nervous and I feel shitty. Help! And it's, again, not something that I can fix. This is a problem. I don't feel good. I feel very nervous and I feel shitty. Hell! And it's, again, not something that I can fix. This is a problem that YouTube has and trolls have exploited. Bruh. So, what can you do? All I can say is, check out the content and please support it. You know, one thing you can say as well, there are new games coming out Friday. You're right, I have to buy them, so that's even more money invested, right? But hopefully, people will come out and support Majora the new game. I really hope they too. will. I hope you guys <laughs> will. Right? If you do, then maybe this isn't a problem. If, the next, if the last week of the month ends up actually being a really great one, and everyone's supportive, and the streams do well, then it's not a big deal, right? But that's kind of a big if, Hail Mary, hoping, right? As opposed to something more consistent. Like, I'm nervous right now. I'm looking at, the, at what it says DSP Gaming made the last month versus this month. It's down an insane amount. Like I said, about 37% decrease in revenue on the channel. Help! Please consider. What's funny is Zen Shuriken says, of course he's worried. That's thousands of dollars a year. Zen Shuriken, that's thousands of dollars a month. A month. But I mean, I just said I'm down 33, 37%. That's thousands of dollars that I need to pay my bills that I'm not making now because of this idiot. Okay? <clears throat> and then you get an idiot like this guy, Stimpy. That's your problem, not ours. Wrong. You're the one here watching the content. I won't be here making content anymore if this continues, you dumb idiot. That's the point I'm making. I'm not some rich YouTuber rolling in money that I can take this hit. You fucking idiotic, brain-dead moron. Leaving a you would be if you didn't waste all your cash comment in a chat and acting like you know what you're talking about all right i'm a normal guy like you when i lose thousands oh of dollars God. a month it fucks me up i'm a normal guy like you only i sit on my ass and play video games all day while people will shower me in tens of thousands of dollars a month but he's just like you guys get a job so he doesn't have to abel with the one you're broke you're fucking poor all right? So that's why I can't have this happen. I need people to hopefully do something to help me in this case. You know, this next week, all these new games coming out, please support these streams. Oh my god, he's drinking wheelchair donations. They're still this back here. And it's still in the back of my neck, the back of my head, the back of my mind, and it's always telling me. It's WWE Champions time. I love it. I love it. Is a mobile game addict. Still have indoctrinated children I'm saying. He's just like me. Oh my god. Hopefully not, man. Here, because it seems like the adventures in Japan have come to an end for 2023's most disliked streamer. You know, the guy who's made his entire identity being as obnoxious and rude as possible just for that sweet internet clout. He ended up being hunted by a bunch of upset Japanese citizens, then fled for his safety to Thailand. But once he was out there, it seems like his views dropped off, so he needed to do something big to get them back up. So I guess he decided to do the dumbest decision of his life and return to Japan with a friend and live stream himself just committing multiple crimes. And then after doing that for a while, he was finally arrested for trespassing. Here's a picture of them taking him to jail because apparently he thought it was pretty funny. But that smile was quickly turned upside down when he was jailed 
jailed for roughly a month release, then rearrested on a different charge. This time for disrupting a restaurant on the 12th of September in 2023 in Osaka. And he did so with a loud Bluetooth speaker he was using to entice people to donate. And now he was in jail for a bit longer because he had to wait for his trial, where his first hearing was in December. Here, the streamer, whose real name is Khaled, denied he had control over the volume, which is just a straight up lie. But he did say, in quote, I would like to apologize to everyone I've caused trouble for. Then he promised that he did not intend to continue live streaming and expressed, I wish to return to my home country, continue my studies, and be a role model for my family. I don't know if I believe that, but he was then brought back to jail until a sentencing that was just now the 10th of January. Where according to a Sankai article, he was charged with forcibly obstructing the business of a gyudon shop in Minami, Osaka by playing loud music and live streaming. Judge Yuki Yasufuku, I probably butchered that name, sentenced the defendant to a prosecution's recommended demand of a 200,000 yen fine, stating the manner of his crime was malicious. 200,000 yen ain't shit, bro. That's like what, maybe 1,200 bucks? Despite defendant Kala denying that he had control over the volume, Judge Yasufuku continued her criticism. He could have lowered the volume himself, yet he did not. In addition to the 200,000 yen fine, he also has to pay the pretrial detention rate of 5,000 yen a day, which roughly doubles his fine. Then on top of that, since he was in jail for roughly three months, he's overstayed his visitor visa and will be sent to deportation and will not be able to return for at least five years. But some people are debating if he could ever get let in again, because apparently on arrival, he needs to check a box admitting he's committed a criminal offense. And then apparently there's another box he might have to check if he's been deported. And this is also if they actually release him now and not rearrest him for some else that he's done. But he did lie in court though, so we'll get into that in a bit. But as of now, it seems like his fines total up to roughly 2,700 US dollars. So since he hasn't been streaming, he's going to have to do some serious budgeting. And that's where today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Yeah, the yen is like in the toilet right now. I'm almost tempted to go to Japan because, bro, if I could go over there and buy 30 something dollar Pokemon booster boxes, bring them back to the US, I could sell them for 60 bucks a piece. Now, I would have to literally fill up like fucking almost a shipping crate full of stuff to make that worthwhile but it's all it's pretty tempting in all honesty like japan is on like a fucking 40 percent discount basically if you're in the u.s like it's incredibly cheap to go to japan right now if you're like spending dollars or you're from the western side of the world so i've debated on it but i don't know that's a long ass flight Money comes in handy. I recently started using Rocket Money to track my spending better, and I found out I was paying for two Netflix accounts on setting setting. Four. I am making my statement today. I will no longer be streaming IRL in Japan. Look, now a lot of you guys can call me a A lot of you guys can call me, you know, you're scared. But if you guys knew how hard the police were on my how many videos they had of me and Johnny, how many people how many stories they had of me and Johnny. If y'all knew how badly they researched us, you would know it is not safe <laughs> to stream in Japan anymore. But apparently he leaked what him and Johnny were planning before Johnny's been officially released. Actually, if y'all don't know, Tehran is actually there. Spidey's, Spidey's in Thailand right now. When Johnny gets out of jail, yeah, we I'm know what he's Johnny. doing in Thailand. I need to go back to Thailand as well. And then I'm going to go back to Thailand as well. So all three of us are going to be in Thailand. So y'all know what that means. <laughs> y'all already know what that means. Me, Spidey, and Johnny in Thailand, bro. Y'all already know what the f that means, bro. So stop sitting here and acting like it's going to be nonsense. It's not going to be f nonsense. So this is true. Johnny just lied in court, and he's going to a country that has worse prisons. <laughs> Oh boy, I have a feeling this saga is just going to continue and it's likely going to get a lot worse. But it'll definitely be interesting to see if he officially gets deported or if he's just told to leave. And again, this is if he isn't rearrested. But I guess we'll just stay tuned. But it's pretty wild. It seems like he just got away with a simple fine because as soon as he returned to Japan with his friend, they instantly started taunting people. Come to me tonight. Come to me tonight. Come get us. I'm here. I'm here with Y'all not doing shit. Y'all not doing shit. I'm stopping on Hero Sima. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. Ah. Ah. Somebody tweet out to all in Japan. I'm live tonight. Come kill me tonight. Kill me tonight. Kill me, kill me on kick. I want to on kick.com. I want to be the first streamer to on kick. You understand? And as if they didn't make their intentions clear enough, here's another clip of them. Yes! We're gonna we're gonna steal! We're gonna destroy Japanese society. That's why I'm here. I'm Jack Sparrow, and these are my crew. We're here to do crime. We're here to break, and I'm here to do hood rat things with my friends. Drop them nuke emojis in the chat. Thank you, Romeo, for five dollars. Drop a nuke in the chat. I'll Everybody. I'll sub if you lick. Everybody, drop a nuke emoji in the. Yeah. So there's no real excuse here. This wasn't a one-off thing. No, they landed in the country and they immediately just started harassing people and disrespecting the culture from start till finish. And right after the previous clip, he did this to a random woman at night.
<laughs> She's crossing the road. <laughs> Mark, our territory. James. <laughs> Who does that? That is not normal behavior. And sure, Japan did punish him with 90 days in jail and a small fine, but I'm also worried that that's not really gonna scare off others who wanna do the same thing for attention. Because I mean, let's be real here. Looking at the case, it seems like they are simply letting a lot of his actions just simply get swept under the rug. And as of right now, it seems like he's been released because people are speculating that he's actually online on Discord now. And there's also a post from Cancel Johnny's on Twitter showing an explanation from a lawyer, which says, easy to understand explanation from a lawyer regarding forced deportation and denial of entry. The ruling does not result in forced deportation or denial of entry. As of said for a while, re-entry is possible if you do not meet the conditions stipulated in Article 24 of the Immigration Control Act. We need to look at the reality and take effective measures. So it seems like a lot of Japanese citizens are really frustrated with this decision as well. But as of right now, it's a little bit unclear if he can actually re-enter Japan or not. All we know is he got slapped with a fine and about three months of Japanese jail. But will this be the last time we cover this guy? Who knows? Probably not, because if I was going to make a prediction, he's probably going to go to some random country, likely Thailand, as we saw from the previous video. Then he's probably going to have some sort of like big return stream. He'll probably be like, I'm going to chill now. I'm going to tone things down. And he might like keep things calm for a little while. And then if his viewership starts tanking, he's probably going to start ramping things up again and start getting more and more wild to, you know, get more and more attention. I don't know if he'll ever go back to Japan again, but that also wouldn't really surprise me because let's be real. I didn't think he was going to go back to Japan again after he was chased out the first time, but he I sure was dumb enough to do that. Is he ground, dumb enough to repeat bro. that action though? I don't know. And I was also sent another video from his friend Gino, where apparently Gino is canceling the plans of going with Johnny due to a tragedy that happened to his family. So at at least for now, I think Gino is out of the streaming picture, but I don't think that's going to deter Johnny from returning to his kick streams. Other than that, though, I hope you guys had a fantastic New Year's. I was sick for two weeks, hence why there's been uh, very few uploads here on this channel, but we're now back healthier than ever. We're going to start 2024 off strong or well, actually. He should go to Mexico. Hell yeah, man. Absolutely. 100%. All right, here we go. PlayStation slams Xbox Goy Pass. Sony CEO says it just doesn't work. Maybe for them. Is it going to load? Come on, baby. Let's go. Whenever we discuss the idea of Xbox versus PlayStation versus Nintendo, these companies are just in such different positions. Obviously, Microsoft is very dead set on the idea of subscription models. Nintendo is trying to make the biggest games for the lowest cost, trying to make games that may not be graphically impressive, but are certainly fun to play. And Sony is going for the big budget AAA Hollywood style games, stuff that costs hundreds of millions of dollars, but are big cinemagraphic experiences, which I don't even think is a word, but I think this battle this console rivalry has been incredibly fascinating to watch it unfold, but people are kind of wondering what comes next. How is this industry going to evolve for the rest of the PlayStation 5, the PlayStation 6, the new Nintendo Switch? I mean, things are definitely about to change. Well, the CEO of Sony did an in-depth interview sort of discussing the nature of the industry as it currently exists and the future of the PlayStation games we love, and I want to kind of talk about that. Let's get into it. Hi, hope you're having a great day. I'm Dreamcast Guy. If you can like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. So this video is going to end with a very personal message. Uh, if you just want to hear about video games, that's here. But, you know, watch to the conclusion if you want to hear something uh, kind of heavy. But let's get into this. Uh -oh. So this is the CEO of Sony, Yo. Yoshida. And he made this statement about gaming subscription models, which we can kind of reach between the lines. He's talking about Game Pass. Very obviously, that is the most direct competitor to the PlayStation is Xbox. And so here he says this, people usually play one game at a time. So an all you can eat type of mini games may not be so valuable compared with video game streaming services. We have a balanced hybrid service on PlayStation Network, subscription as well as pay per content. So he's essentially trying to say that, hey, Game Pass works for some people or, you know, the same way that some people enjoy other streaming services, like, I don't know, things like Ubisoft Plus, where you can download and play older Ubisoft games very easily. But he's essentially saying, 
PlayStation isn't going to go down that route because for us, we just don't think it's as successful for the gamers. Now, somebody even posted this interesting translation where they're basically saying, look, this is a hybrid service. So what we're going to do is we'll take your monthly fee for PlayStation Plus Premium. We'll give you retro games. We'll give you new releases here and there like indie stuff. Sea of Stars obviously was day one on both Game Pass and it was also day one on PlayStation Plus. But you know what? If we actually have it as this loosey-goosey concept, we don't mind taking stuff out of the service as well as selling you $70 games. It seems like Sony is trying to have their cake and eat it too. They'll charge you a subscription fee as high as they can get away with on top of the full-priced yep. games that they're cranking out. Now, this interview is interesting because they very much doubled down on the idea that more PlayStation games are coming to stuff that isn't PlayStation. Maybe even things like mobile, cloud gaming, PC gaming. To me, as a person with a very powerful gaming PC, I'm pretty in favor of this. Uh, I do oh, think that God, my one... Bro. Do you remember how many fucking times Dreamcast guy used to fucking screech about games going to PC? Oh my god, that's fucking ironic. How the times have changed, you know? I'm glad Dreamcast guy has matured from his uh, previous stances, but that's pretty ironic. Majora Jeff with a 5 request Steampunk PC Gamers Overhype Flavor of the Month release to downplay major Nintendo fran- Yeah, we can do that. I know what you're talking about. We can complaint with all these PlayStation games coming to PC is we still don't have trophy support. Like, personally, I want some sort of PlayStation launcher, the way that we have like a Blizzard launcher and a Riot launcher and stuff like that. Rockstar Games has a launcher. I, I would love an idea to basically boot up PlayStation games on my PC and they still work with my PlayStation account. They still let me pop trophies and unlock stuff, especially if it had some cloud saves where I could pass things back and forth. Look, Xbox doesn't always have the games I like most, not the biggest Starfield fan, and Redfall was definitely a dumpster fire, but I definitely love the fact that the games I play on my Xbox immediately sync with my Xbox PC account, it passes the saves back and forth, I mean, it's a extremely good system that's not just fluid, it's easy, which, as a dumbass, I really enjoy. But people are actually discussing this because we're in an interesting spot with the industry itself. Subscription growth has flatlined. No new people are basically buying into this. Now, now maybe that term doesn't make sense to you, but essentially no people are buying into Game Pass that have not already had Game Pass. There isn't this huge flush of fresh audiences subscribing to stuff. And that goes for PlayStation Plus as well. If you have PlayStation Plus, there's a good chance you've had it for a long time. There isn't this huge chunk of new console buyers getting these subscription models. So now we're in this weird spot where if you're trying to purely monetize a subscription model, like if you're trying to make as many billions of dollars as possible on Game Pass, there is a ceiling. And I think that ceiling is lower than some people probably predicted. Now, there is some expectations. There is some a uh, little bit of analysis that perhaps about 33 million people do have Xbox Game Pass. And I mean, there's no denying the fact that Microsoft is literally the most valuable company in the world. So even if Game Pass isn't as profitable as they probably hope, they can certainly foot the bill to keep those games going. Exactly. I just think it's interesting that... But that's the difference that it's always been is Microsoft doesn't need gaming. PlayStation does. Microsoft can afford to lose billions of dollars and potentially missed gaming revenue by putting shit in Game Pass. PlayStation can't. But the thing is, is Microsoft long term is not in the business of just sitting there and losing money. So at a certain point, even if they can afford to lose the money, they're going to get to a certain, you know, point in this life cycle where they're like, all right, we're literally just pissing money away. We could take that billion dollars and buy cloud startups every single fucking year instead of just dumping money into gaming with zero return whatsoever. So, yes, Microsoft can afford it for now, but long term, it's still yet to be seen if it's a uh, viable business model because the subscriptions are plateauing, yet Microsoft keeps spending more and more money putting games into that subscription. Xbox, I think, is not necessarily going to go third party, but they're going to start putting their games on PlayStation. Stuff like Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves are rumored to be coming soon. This is interesting to me because when I hear these tweets, when I hear this talk about PlayStation, PlayStation and Sony in general has been so obsessed 
with the walled garden approach. They've been doing this now for about 12 years, which is that instead of branching out, instead of putting their products onto the rival consoles, as much as possible, they just try and build their barriers and keep you in. They want PlayStation gamers to... A walled garden approach implies that you keep things out, not in. Buy PlayStation games and get PlayStation Plus, whereas Nintendo, they don't mind if you own other systems. A walled garden approach means they want you to only play what they allow you. No, that's not... That's not a great analogy. A walled garden implies that Sony would only let you play their games and nothing else. A walled garden is closer to what Nintendo does, where they basically, you know, quality, or at least they used to. They used to, like, quality control every single game that would release on their console to make sure that it was, you know, up to their standards, but, yeah. Xbox doesn't I get what care he's going you play for it on a for PC. That, but, or yeah, a walled garden is not that your cell phone while taking the squirtiest taco bell dump possible it's just about yeah i had the squirtiest protein shit earlier so i can relate having game pass playstation i guess i'm curious to see how this shakes out for the rest of the playstation 5 generation like can they stay profitable with games that are so expensive in this current climate People are discussing the idea of the industry bubble bursting. There has been a massive Good. amount of layoffs. If you've not been paying attention, pretty Good. much every single studio that's at least even decently Get sized is doing mass HR firings. They just fired 11% of Riot Games, which is League of Legends and Valorant. This is one of the most profitable companies, and they are mass firing people. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because we're in this spot where... I do think that people invested a lot in video games during 2020 and 2021. A lot of these trillion... Get rid of all the diversity hires and HR departments. I agree. ...dollar investment. Also writers. ...think groups and mega billion dollar donors and stuff like that tried to make more... ...and stop paying for professional fucking voice actors like Young Yeah. Like, bruh. Stop making it so game developers are celebrities, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. They're not. They're fucking programmers, dude. Nobody fucking gives a shit about the guy that built the fucking website for fucking Uber Eats. <laughs> Why do you give a fuck about the guy who designed a character in a fucking video game? Uh, it's just dumb. These are people who work 9 to 5 jobs. They're not some fucking, you know, elite level artists. Live service games, more battle passes, more subscription models, and a lot of those have not panned out. This is my current frame of mind when it comes to the future of PlayStation. At and least Dreamcast guy has a based game in the background. Exoprimal's very good. Specifically the rest of the PS5 generation is that I hope they keep their eyes on the ball. I hope they keep making big AAA releases that are fun, maybe some remakes, maybe some AA stuff, maybe a Bloodborne remaster, but they don't just chase that infinite cash cow. Sony has talked about the fact that they want to make as many live service games as possible, and to me this seems like a very bad move. I think that what will actually do them best is if they just keep making the games that have already been paying their bills. Uncharted, Horizon, God of War, like stick with what you know. I'm not saying don't experiment, I'm just saying don't chase that Game Pass money because I think it's just a very different audience. But uh, clearly Sony knows that. Their detrimental statements towards the current state of subscription models, clearly they're not going all in on that. I just, hmm, PlayStation, I want to see them grow. And in the current climate, I'm curious what that's going to take. I mean, it's not like their games can become more expensive. It's not like their games can become even more huge. I, I don't know. Give us more Days Gone. Give us more incredibly unique awesomeness, like Ghost of... Days Gone is literally the same fucking movie game slop that's causing Sony to not be able to put out as many games because of the massive amount of development time and budget required to make those type of games. Tsushima, go outside the box. But outside of the box, and you use fucking Days Gone and Ghost of Sashimi as the fucking... Holy shit, bro. That is literally Sony's copy-pasted third world open... Or third fucking person open world pseudo movie game genre. The, none of those games are outside the fucking box. They're the same fucking game, just with a different setting slightly. They all revolve around massive forests and woodlands and, and bro, I don't know. None of those fucking games are unique. But obviously don't break the box in the process.
I don't know. These have just been some off-the-cuff thoughts thinking about this because it another is interesting. Days, wait, Days Gone is another Last of Us? Pretty much, but with motorcycles and an obnoxious white male character. To consider that the journalists hated Days Gone because of the uh, gruff white male character, quote-unquote. That Like, literally, that is what they said. They docked the review score for uh, Days Gone because the character was a white straight male. I shit you fucking not. You can look it up. That's like a real review. The fact that PlayStation is something that makes subscription model money, but isn't ever going to jump in with both feet the way that Microsoft has. But what do you guys think about this? Tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. No, Pal World is not how Pokemon games should have been. Pokemon games should have stayed the same and just had better graphics. They should have remained to be, um, you know, like that semi-linear... Uh, format that they've always been with random encounters just with way better visuals and yeah no i think pokemon trying to be open world tanked the fucking franchise personally or trying to ve like deviate too much from the formula because sun and moon i feel like is where the decline of pokemon really started to happen and if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already and please keep dreaming uh, okay, so personal statement here. Uh, yesterday, I talked about my mom passing away. Uh, just mentioned it. I got so many uh, messages and comments and, and, and just honestly really, really good advice. Uh, just incredibly powerful stuff. Uh, this grief has been complicated. Uh, my mom and I didn't really, you know, get along the last 20 years. And a Ooh, lot of Ooh, that's really rough then. Damn. Yeah, that sucks, man really interesting insight so i just wanted to say i appreciate it the uh you know i kind of get myself out that's even worse bro because it's like deep down you still love your mom but you have a complicated relationship and then you know they die before you get a chance to work everything out yeah dude that's really rough yeah dreamcast guy is definitely going through it right now on camera so i appreciate the fact you guys are able to connect and, and help me as well i can say genuinely from the bottom of my heart that, that y'all's words have helped me and i appreciate that so thank you guys and please keep dreaming he's definitely going through it man thanks so much for watching that video hopefully if you he's hanging in there all right but that's rough especially if you're not on uh, great terms with your parents or whoever because you don't ever get a chance to you know actually let them know like hey despite all this shit you know I still love you. I don't know, man. That's got to be rough. I feel bad for him, bro. Let's see. ASVPX Paul with the five. Appreciate it, man. Big ups. Something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck. All right, so copy. The vertical video, disgusting. I wonder if he's still in the same garage. With the shilling of Pal World in full force, yep. I thought it was about time that we really take a step back and kind of talk about what's been happening. When it comes to these random meme games, as I call them, PC exclusives, usually, that come out, usually at reduced prices, that kind of take the internet by storm for like a brief couple of weeks. They're the biggest thing ever for, uh, for the month. And then they just kind of fall off the face of the earth, right? We saw this with Temtem. We saw this with... Uh, we're seeing this now with Power World. It is kind of a reoccurring thing with the PC gaming community where every single time they think they can get away with it, they'll... Was Temtem even popular? I thought that game flopped. I don't know. I never played it because it looked like shit, but I don't know. How did Temtem do? I don't think that game ever was that popular, though. Power World's very popular.
Clear one of their games, some random game from some no-name developer that nobody cares about as like a, a Nintendo franchise killer. Whether it's Zelda or Mario or Pokemon, they're always going to come out and try to pretend as if these games have a massive audience on PC. You know, they're going to pretend that if Nintendo put their games on PC, they would sell like a billion units and like uh, people would never, ever buy their hardware again. You know, like you have, you have people pushing that narrative, right? That, that uh, these games showcase how popular Nintendo games are are on the PC platform, and that Nintendo should put their franchise, franchises on PC. You know, never mind that Nintendo makes a ton of money on their hardware and software. You know, never mind that they're highly successful at doing that. Never mind that they have no business doing that, that they have nothing but, uh, that they have everything to lose if they went in that direction. Let's just, let's just pretend that Nintendo would be better off putting games on PC. It is disgusting, right? And it seems like Every time a Power World comes out, every time the Baldur's Gate 3 comes out, every time, like, an Elden Ring comes out, like, the PC gaming community is there, you know, releasing statements about how Nintendo can't compete with this, how how they're stale and outdated, how their hardware can't run these games, and how, like, you know, random developers are going to step up, and they're going to make, like, things that, that stomp all of these classic Nintendo IPs. You know, I've seen these people, like, hype up freeware Fire Emblem games from uh, the series creator. I've seen people, like, hype up fan translations, fan patches, uh, fan remakes. You know, we saw this with... Uh, the Samus Returns remake, right? The uh, Metroid 2 remake. Uh, I've seen people, like, just scream about how Nintendo isn't any good. At least he doesn't have the camera pointed at his fucking dick anymore. And that's why they need to release all their games on PC. You guys remember that shit? He would sit there and scratch his fucking balls with his cock, like, right in the middle of the fucking shot. It was nasty. So they, they don't have to emulate them anymore. Like, that, that's funny, isn't it? Like, the narrative is always that the PC Master Race is just going to emulate all these Nintendo games, but they also are very insistent that Nintendo should release their games on Steam. So, uh, wh which wh which is it, buddy? <laughs> like, are you playing all these games or not? It's uh, it's laughable, but... <sighs> what's, been with ha what's been happening with Power World is a pretty typical thing from that community, from the, fr from the Pretendo YouTube sphere right like every single time one of these meme games come out like the community rallies behind it they really 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 want to see whatever nintendo is doing fail whether it's like a promoting Bruh, if pokemon actually released a good game i would draw pal world right now and go play that instead i mean i still like the shining pearl remake more than pal world personally so i don't agree with that i think this is just genuinely a fun game to play it's not a fucking Pokemon replacement. It's that it fills a niche that Pokemon has not been able to fill because their games fucking suck. And Game Freak needs to get off their fucking ass and, you know, actually hire people who know how to make a modern video game. If the Fire Emblem or some other random platformer other than Mario or whatever, right? Um, you know, I remember when uh, Sonic, Crash, uh, Sonic Team Racing came out and there were seriously people pushing this idea that it was better than Mario Kart 8. Of course, that is, of course, in hindsight, like, completely laughable, considering how relevant Mario Kart 8 has remained over the past decade. Well, Sonic has, hasn't been discussed at all. You know, like John Tron said, Sonic and Sega plagiarism cards. But when you, uh, when you... Majora Jab for the five, my mom died seven years ago, and I depressed for a long time. Oh, yeah, I can imagine, man. Anytime you have a major loss in your life, like, it's sad. So... I mean, the most important thing, I mean, I guess, you know, to get back onto a uh, more heavy topic is, you know, just make sure the people who are important in your life, you know, you get a chance to tell them how you actually feel about them and stuff like that. You know, don't leave things on bad terms with someone you actually value being around or having in your life over something stupid. So, I don't know. That's, I guess, the best takeaway you can do from that is, like, you know... Don't let, I guess, petty disagreements or things like that, you know, get in the way of having, like, a good relationship with a family member or something. Majora Jeff with the five. Harmon makes me feel embarrassed to be a Nintendo fan. I hate it. Nah, I wouldn't bother it. He's living in a garage wearing an anime shirt with brown cabinets behind him. It's okay. <laughs> He's his own creature, man. He writes a vampire erotic fiction as well look back at like just the sheer gaslighting that goes on in these communities like how they try to convince you that power world is some unique innovative thing that's doing everything that fans wanted pokemon to do you know one of the big things i'm hearing people say is that like oh you can ride your pokemon you've been able to do that since the beginning right have you never heard of surf <laughs> like bro it's kind of a standard thing when it comes to pokemon right like oh you can craft uh 
haven't you don't you remember the the pokeball crafting in gen 2 right where you got a kurt with like the specific apricots and like like do you not remember like do you not know anything about pokemon at all is what i'm saying like that's the that's the trend i notice whenever i see people like praise stuff like this is that like you can't even do the thing where you pretend that like oh it's a it's a big innovative new direction for pokemon because game freak already did that with legends arceus which to this day is still a game that isn't generally accepted among the community to be great you know like people don't want to admit that like legends arceus was was fantastic it uh, was not legend why did he say arceus i've heard people say arceus or arceus never arceus what the fuck legends arceus bruh 2022 it that's was, gross you know, man such a big evolution for uh, the, the game free pokemon model i loved that game and yet you won't see people talk about it. oh that's right <laughs> that's another game that you can ride pokemon on isn't it ridiculous uh like power world is interesting because there's all these obvious problems majora jeff of the five yeah i get it but this is not how i want nintendo fans to be it's all right man how many subs does he have after all these years He's still at a thousand subs after like six years. That's okay. I don't think anybody thinks he rec or uh, represents anyone. Problems with it, like the plagiarism and the, the glitchy, the, uh, the glitchiness, the fact that it's uh, in early access. Like this is going to be a repeat of Tentem for sure, where a lot of YouTubers release all these statements that like, oh, I, I'm enjoying this a lot more than Pokemon, even though they don't play Pokemon. Like they're going to do all this stuff. I like Pokemon more than Pal World, but Scarlet and Violet ain't it, Chief. But they always do. And then it's going to fall by the wayside, right? It's a, uh, it's amazing seeing people like kind of cling on to like the alleged uh, player counts and the sales. Like, oh, it, it has nine hundred thousand players at once. Nobody cares. Okay, nobody cares. I, I do think this needs to be the thing that's said about like uh, every time that the the topic of PC player counts comes up. I mean, is to that be nobody... fair, bro, like Nintendo games probably have well over two million concurrent players when they release. Like Tears of the Kingdom probably had like four million people playing at once. It's just not an online game, so it's not tracked. So, yeah, I mean, bro, those Nintendo launches are fucking huge. Like, when Breath of the Wild came out for the Switch, the Switch version of the game sold more copies than the actual Nintendo Switch had consoles available. So, Nintendo games sell, like, fucking crazy. Cares. Talk about the actual game. And nobody seems to do that, right? Like, that's the thing that really sticks out to me about Power World, in spe uh, specifically at this point in time, is that nobody is talking about the game. They're talking about how Pokemon is dead and how Game Freak isn't going to be able to compete with this. Never mind that they, they're going to have another How is one. Pokemon dead? Yeah, if people are actually saying Pokemon is dead, they're fucking retarded. I agree with that. And in a couple of years, you know, never mind that they could easily just commission some other studio to make, to make a game that... Um, is kind of open world there's with multiple players and pokemon and stuff like that like never mind that like the pokemon company is having lots of uh, lots of success success stories right now let's push this narrative that like uh power world is way way above what pokemon is doing even though it's like blatantly plagiarized and it isn't doing anything particularly new or, in or innovative let us just pretend that this is some top tier game simply to spite nintendo fans and that is what this essentially comes down to is that uh, i'm key you could say the pokemon is dead look at the games they suck but scarlet and violet are the fastest selling pokemon games of all time so obviously it ain't all that bad <laughs> This is pure. They're spite. doing just it fine has nothing monetarily. To do with, like, enjoying the product or being enthusiastic about the product or like enjoying the game or anything like that. Like the reason the game is being hyped up so much is because uh, this is probably the last stand of uh, the anti Pokemon community on YouTube, right? Uh, after Gen 8, there was like this very real push to kind of destroy Pokemon, destroy its reputation in the online space. And it never really stuck, right? It completely fell off once Sword and Shield came out and was great. We're great games, right? And uh, ever since then, there's been, like, definitely a push to bring it back. Definitely a push to keep the narrative going. But it's uh, it's been falling apart more and more every year, right? It, it feels like every time that Game Freak puts out a new Pokemon game and it does higher and higher numbers, like, it, it becomes more and more difficult to pretend that the audience is upset with this, right? The people who are upset with Pokemon aren't We need a good Yu-Gi-Oh! game. I've talked like about well, you can't really have a Yu-Gi-Oh! game like Pal World because even in the TV show, Yu-Gi-Oh! is a card game. So the only way to make a Yu-Gi-Oh game is to just make a card game. So it wouldn't really work. Midnight Mawa with the two, Gen 3, and Black and White 2 are the best Pokemon games. 
Hmm. I would say Gen 3, yes, but I would change black and white with uh, Gen 4. And then you got a deal. But, yeah. I never played black and white, too, so I can't say. But the original black and white, definitely not. This several times. But, you know, if, if the primary group of people who are complaining about your game are 30-year-old man children, right? When, when your game is targeted towards, like, 10-year-olds, right? You know that these people aren't relevant to the discussion, right? You know that these guys are a fringe demographic. And as a result, you should not listen to them. And I think uh, Game Freak is doing a very wise thing in just kind of doing what they've always done and sticking to their guns and doing producing new and interesting Pokemon games, right? Like, I don't think that any of the points raised about Game Freak, about their alleged lack of visual quality, about, like, the alleged uh, uh, quality assurance of the game, uh, about, like, the features, the mechanics, like, everything about that. Like, I don't think any of that really, any of that argument, any of those arguments really holds any merit at all. Like, every time I see a new Game Freak game, like, I, I enjoy it, right? Like, I love what Game Freak is doing right now. And uh, I to me, I think the major difference between Tears of the Kingdom and Pokemon is that Pokemon is in a position where people actually believe that, like, the arguments against it might have some merit, right? I suppose it's really similar to what happened in, like, the GameCube and Wii era of Zelda, where people were saying that, like, oh, Zelda's lost its way, it's declining quality, even though that was never actually true. Like, a lot of casual fans and, like, uh, people who didn't play the games believed it, right? Because, like, whoa, if it was as good, it would, like, sell more, right? And now that we're seeing that, like, uh, Tears of the Kingdom sell more than ever, outselling a lot of major fantasy RPGs, these same people are just flailing around, just crying about how Nintendo fanboys will buy anything, right? Like, uh, that isn't going to stick, right? And I, I think it's going to be the same deal with Pokemon, right? Like, I think it's safe to say that PAL World isn't going to be relevant long term. Like, I think... I agree with that. Unless the people behind PAL World are very quick to pivot and make merchandise make a, like, animated show, make, like, other tie-ins to the franchise, they're not going to have longevity. I agree with that. Because none of the designs for any of the PALs are super memorable or unique or anything like that. And then also, there's no way to interact with the franchise aside from just playing the game, which the game is going to get very old very quick because there's only a 100 monsters to catch. And, you know, it's not really a unique idea. The designs aren't anything that special. And on top of that, you know, it's just like every other survival game. So there's not really anything new there, and there's not really anything that you can interact with outside of just the game itself. So I don't know, man. It's, it's going to be an uphill battle for them long term. But if they can pivot properly, you know, maybe they have a shot. Pokemon is not trash, bro. The f Dude, the Pokemon franchise is worth its weight in fucking diamonds. <laughs> that shit is incredibly fucking valuable. Pokemon as a whole is not trash. There's a reason why it's the most successful media franchise of all time, man. Like, Pokemon is worth its weight in fucking diamonds, bro. Like, they literally have a license to print money with, the like, trading cards. The Pokemon merchandise is incredibly profitable. The video games still sell well. The TV show makes them a lot of money. They have, like, Pokemon dedicated, like, tourist attractions in Japan. Like, the secondary market for Pokemon on eBay alone is, like, hundreds of millions of dollars a month. Like... It's pretty insane. Pokemon is a fucking monster. I think the novelty is going to wear off. People aren't going to be able to, like, weaponize it against Pokemon anymore. And when that happens, the game simply will have no audience. Because that, that's what this is all about. It has nothing to do with wanting to play this game. It has everything to do with talking down to a video game IP that is made for young children. <laughs> oh my god. Alright guys, I need to hop off because I got an early meeting tomorrow morning, so I need to head to bed. So, have a one... Oh my god, that's gross. Ew. Anyway, have a great night everyone. I will talk to all of y'all tomorrow. Hopefully your uh, Wednesday is good, and I will see all of y'all then. Peace out.
Give me money. <laughs> fucking Christ. Shut up. Shut up. The fuck up, you fucking virgin losers. God damn. Go get a life. Go outside. Ha find meaning in your fucking life. Because they're angry and can't get pussy. So I have to do it to shut them the fuck up. Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck all of you. Shut the fuck up. God damn it.